Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Generation Y Conservative Podcast. Uh, I am glad to be back and lots of stuff has happened. It's been actually over a year since the last time I did the podcast. The set has changed a little bit. I actually redesigned the set back in March of this year and planned on redoing the podcast again in April. But obviously, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened since then, um, even over the last year. Just craziness. And I didn't know how to get back into it because it seemed like every single day the news stories were coming out just faster and something different all the time and it just got to be so crazy. So there's a lot of things happening. I obviously want to jump back into this before the election. There's a lot of things going on there. There's a lot of things happening with Black Lives Matter. There's a lot of things happening with the virus. And I think that is the starting point that I need to start with tonight on just the absolute craziness that has started off with 2020 and what's been happening. Um, So we're going to get into the virus tonight. I have my wife joining me, Leslie, and we're going to be discussing this. I'm going to try to go through this. I have, I, when I was doing this, putting this all together, I felt like Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia with the crazy conspiracy theory chart behind me and everything and just trying to tie things together. I wrote down all the topics I want to talk about. I organized them into different groups and everything, found all the articles, found all the videos, and it's just, it's packed because we have a lot of stuff to go over, things, how it all feeds into it. It's not all just about the virus. Obviously, we're seeing massive shutdowns all over the country with the businesses and everything that's going on with that. And people are saying one thing and then another. And then the news says, do this, but don't do this. And then they flip it and they start doing different things. It's all madness. It's all craziness. And when you voice your opinion in opposition to everything that's going on to try and support either yourself as an entrepreneur or as a small business or your friends that may be in that position, uh, people that are out of work, people that are going through depression and everything, somehow we're the ones that look like the enemies on social media and people are making you out to be the enemy. And on top of that, you have this mentality that we're going to get into here on bullying people and shaming people into obeying and complying with the rules that are set out for you. So it's it's a lot of stuff. I'm going to try to speed talk my way through this, get a, a little bit of reaction from her, uh, banter back and forth and everything, but there is a lot of content to go over. We're going to be talking about as much as possible. Try to cram it in. The format has changed. The podcast, as of right now, is going to be, instead of every week, three hours at a time on uh, on Sundays, it's going to be every other week and try to stick to an hour. I don't know if that's going to happen tonight. I'm going to shoot for that, but there's some videos that I'm throwing in here too on things that are going on, and we're just going to get into it. So I'm Chris. Welcome to the Generation Y Conservative Podcast. Let's talk about where I've been. I've been very busy with work and everything, trying to organize my thoughts on what's going on, how I want to approach this, and get back into the podcast, how to spend more time with the family. And uh, because I, I work probably 70 hours a week and I was doing a lot of editing and a lot of the podcast, just the three hours just to do the podcast. Um, speaking of the podcast, you know, quick topic right there too. Mike, my co-host is not going to be with me anymore. Um, and I don't, um, begrudge that. I love Mike, uh, best to him. He plans on getting into a new job and he feels that voicing a conservative opinion that ends up on social media is not something that he wants when he's trying to get new clients. And I understand that. And I think it's really sad because we as conservatives are not allowed to voice our opinion anymore uh, without being doxxed without people going after us on social media and the companies that we work for and trying to get us fired just for having a different opinion than everybody. But people that are liberal and in the working world are allowed to frame out their social media profiles in Black Lives Matter, gay pride flags, and do everything with the liberal agenda, and they don't have to fear anything at all. Uh, As long as it's going with the flow of the social evolution that's going on out there, they're fine, but we're not supposed to talk up. Well, thank God I work for a fantastic company and a great person that isn't restricting my voice and believes in the First Amendment. And I'm just going to leave it at that. My boss doesn't do that either. Yeah, that's where I've been. (laughs) So why are we starting with the coronavirus? 
or the China virus, okay? Um, it's impacting everybody. Uh, it, it is what is happening right now, and I think that going forward from this point forward, this is going to be just bubbling to the surface with everything that, that we're going with, with po politics and everything. You're going to, I don't know how these debates are going to turn out. I don't even know if we're going to have debates. There's no reason why we shouldn't have some sort of debate, whether it's virtual or not, right? I mean, th they have to hear Joe Biden off script, off the teleprompter, yeah. because the guy is going through severe dementia. I it's mean, they're going to try hard to not have... <laughs> yeah, they will try. Yeah. 16 states But will... how can you have a d Democratic or election without hearing both sides? They'll try. Yeah. They'll try. Oh, yeah. there, there are going to be 16 states that can vote by mail-in ballot before the first debate even happens. That's insane. So, impact personally. I believe in personal stories and everything that's going on. I just want to put all cards on the table. We've been very outspoken against the virus, against the mandates that are going on, against the masks and, and social interactions and everything, and especially the shutdown. She's gone to a couple protests in Harrisburg in Pennsylvania here, talking about or just joining the people, trying to get businesses to reopen again. And we're very lucky. I happen to have a job that I work outside. We adapted to the environment. I do all my client meetings uh, via go-to meeting. I stay outside. I get things, contracts and service agreements and everything else signed virtually via DocuSign. We were able to adapt very quickly, come up with a game plan and do that. But not every business can do that. And that's unfortunate. There's a lot of things that are going on. Uh, you know, I work with clients from all different areas. I have I have clients that are mayors and cops and firefighters and you know a lot of nurses and doctors and everything. And I talk about these things with them and I get I get the opinions. Here's the thing: I am seeing a lot of things that are going on. One of my clients has a business, and his business is pest control for other businesses. Within the first two weeks of this shutdown, I asked him, are you okay? How's everything going with your business? His response to me was, we're hanging in there, we're doing okay, but we're losing accounts left and right from businesses that we do pest control for that are absolutely closing their doors for good because they do not have the capital to survive. And that was within the first two weeks. We are now about 160 days into the 15 day shutdown to flatten the curve. <laughs> Okay, last week on the 13th was the 150th day of this 15 day, tenfold Pretty sure for the this curve shutdown. Is flattened. Yeah. yeah, well, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the, the flattening of the curve and what, what was it even for? What was the purpose of flattening the curve and everything? Uh, I have, like I said, I have police officers that are clients. I talked to a police officer in a small town that I'm working in, very small population. How is this affecting you? Chris? I will sometimes get one or two calls for suicides a year, and it sucks to show up to. And he looked me straight in the eye, and something he said is not in the news right now. In this small town, I'm showing up to a couple a week because of people losing their jobs, losing their livelihood, and killing themselves over it. Okay, This is taking a toll. Thank God for our family, we, I, you know, God's intervention. It's obvious with everything that's going on, with the job I have, the ability to keep on working. Education, we homeschool. Do you know what the numbers are on, on how many people are now actually considering homeschooling over going back into public schools or charter schools or anything? I don't know official numbers. Um, Facebook group that I'm a part of that's local homeschoolers. Um, and so you can join it if you're just interested. So it doesn't necessarily mean that these people are definitely homeschooling. But the numbers went, there was about 300 in the group. It wasn't mm -hmm. huge. Um, within the matter of a month, it went up to a thousand. So right. there's at least a lot of interest into finding out more. But yeah, I have a ton of friends who keep asking me for yeah. advice or information or if I can guide them in any way. Um, so it, it'll be interesting when those official numbers come out. It's going to be a huge uptick this year. Yep. And listen, we're slow rolling into this right now. I'm just giving you some background on uh, family here and the situation with what's going on. Uh, this is going to get intense. I'm just telling you right now with the kind of data that I'm going to be throwing at you and what's happening and these crazy mandates and everything. But 
one thing I want to lay out there, we are not healthcare professionals, okay? We are not here to give healthcare advice. If you or your family members have serious health problems, that seems to be one of the things that the virus is attacking. And by all means, because we know these people on Facebook, mm -hmm. protect your family. Mm -hmm. If you feel that the best thing to do is quarantine yourself, which is typically reserved for the sick people, not the healthy, then do it. Okay, But those of us that want to get back out into the world and interact and keep the economy going and have our businesses survive, our livelihood that feeds our families and everything, as far as I'm concerned and what I've said throughout this pandemic is if, you, if your job puts food on your family's table, you are an essential worker. That's all there is to it. Okay, So if you have health problems, I am by no means dismissing this disease or this virus. I'm not even going to say that the virus is a hoax. That's not the case. That's not, That's not what we're saying. It is, it is a very serious virus that if you get it, is deadly. And I get that. Can be. Can be deadly. <laughs> right. And, and it can be. People are dying. That is, that is fact. Yes. How many, at what rate, is the death? At what rate is the number of people that actually have the virus? That isn't even truly known. And the, we, uh, we're going to get into some numbers. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> we're going to get into some numbers. So we'll go on from there. But one thing I have said from the beginning is that this virus has spotlighted liberal hypocrisy. Okay? Oh, yeah. So what kind of liberal hypocrisy? I made a little list here. Borders and restricting travel top thing. By the way, Black Lives Matter and the whole Chaz, Chad uh, little village, first thing they did was set up a, a border, border immediately, which is what they railed against, brought in guns to patrol and beat the ever-living hell out of people with a different opinion. That is your socialism at work Absolutely. In, a, in, a, in a second, okay? Borders and restricting travel. We have now had the Trump administration fighting for four years to work on closing off the borders with the liberal left screaming their heads off at every opportunity. Pictures of AOC crying in front of the border fence and everything. We're book agent children. All this stuff. And what happens? This virus outbreak happens. We're going to go through the timeline on the reaction from the president and the liberals and everything else throughout the whole period of time. But one thing that was very obvious is that when other countries started dealing with the virus in Europe, the liberals here were praising them for shutting down their borders down the border. and doing the right thing. Why isn't President Trump shutting down the border and stopping this virus? Well, guess what? It would have happened four freaking years ago if you had listened to us then. Because it's not only drugs. It's not only child prostitution and sex trafficking coming across the borders. It's not only drug dealers. It's viruses and unhealthy people that bring things into our country untracked. Untracked. That's, that's the point. Listen, I don't care if a legal immigrant comes into this country with, with a burden on their shoulder and stuff going on. But we, at least we know. Mm -hmm. And we can quarantine that person. We can treat that person and everything. This has spotlighted the fact that the liberal left, who railed against us for wanting borders, is now hypocrisy in spotlight. Okay? The next thing, corporations overseas. Okay? What happened when the shutdown happened? We're still dealing with the ramifications right now. I happen to work in the construction industry. Guess what? The suppliers can't get wood or shingles or siding material or nails or plywood. Like all this stuff can't get to us right now. All the stuff that we rely on from China, okay, isn't getting to us right now from other countries, India and everything. Those things are not coming into the country because there's a restriction on the stuff that comes in. But why? Are we relying on corporations overseas to get the things here that we always used to have here in America? Because we had one of the highest corporate tax rates for decades now due to liberal left policies that drove the companies and the jobs with them outside of our country and we had to rely on importing those things back in. If we had those things here today, we would not be experiencing the shortages that we're dealing with right now. And we would have an abundance of jobs, even more so than the best job economy that Trump had in recent history with 
any president, mm -hmm. right? Right. Manufacturing, that goes right into manufacturing. Things that we rely on from other countries could have been made here. Again, taxes, everything, okay? We manufacture here, we don't have to rely on importing, we have the jobs, and with a lower corporate tax rate, you provide more jobs of people that pay taxes. You get more money. This, this, this whole mentality from the liberal left on taxes, they don't get it. It is such a surface level argument every single time they can't dig deeper. Okay. Well, ultimately, corporations don't pay tax because they'll push they, that expense onto the consumer, the consumer through so the product or service. They're trying to be competitive, so they go overseas, so mm -hmm. they don't have to push that extra price onto us. Yep. Because w are we going to buy something from China for $2, or are we going to pay $10 for it just because it's from the U.S.? Yep. Well, the vast majority of people aren't going to do and there's that. And there is an argument to be had, first of all, let me acknowledge, on the liberal left, that if we have the jobs here, there's a minimum wage, and that would probably increase the price of those goods and services anyway. But the fact is... Not to that extent. The it's it's the um, <laughs> the way the market works, right? Free market. Free, yeah, the free market, but um, the supply and demand, right? Yeah. As the supply and demand moves and the economy adjusts to those numbers, yes, the price of the, of the product or service may go up, but the but the overall oh, the underlying economy raises all boats mm -hmm. with it. Okay, so yes, we may be paying more, but then at the same time, with so many more jobs and the minimum wage and everything feeding into that, those jobs are going to end up paying more, and we have an overall healthier economy anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, education at home. <laughs> okay, uh, the left hates the idea of anything but public schools. And at the very top level, that is talking about the liberal left being funded politically by the teachers unions, mm -hmm. okay? Again, and I've talked about education many times before. I have nothing against individual teachers per se. There's a lot of bad teachers out there that are protected by the unions. And there's also a lot of fantastic teachers out there that are stifled in their pay that could be increased based on the merit of their work, okay? The unions suck. Oh, and I've dealt with them. I have dealt with the unions, okay? The unions were out to get me when I was on the school board. But now we have a lot of people that are looking at educational opportunities at home with homeschooling, going to charter schools, going to online schools. I predicted over a decade ago now that the next bubble to burst, I thought it would be at the university level, and I think that's coming because we yeah. haven't hit the university stuff yet, was going to be the educational bubble burst for mm -hmm. that sector uh, because of overall uh, costs of tuition and everything for colleges. It was a different education bubble, but it is the next bubble to burst. This is, right. this is what's happening. People and, are starting to wake up that they have other options. That yeah. public school is not your only option. Exactly. Well, public or private feels like your only option, but it's not. There's yep. so many other options out there. How about politicians at home? We were always told that the politicians had to meet in DC to go over all these things and that they had to be together in the swamp to get things done. Instead of being at home, speaking with the constituents that they represent. But guess what? They're afraid to go into DC now. Most of them are working from home. This is probably the way it should be. Okay. Well, that's also because they're not on the state level. Yeah, they're not feeding off of each other. Our governor has not been in the Capitol this entire time. Yeah, screw our governor. We'll yes. talk about him later, too. Uh, hashtag FU Wolf. Uh, protests and shutdowns, okay? It's okay for you to mass gather in the streets for a Black Lives Matter protest, but you are not allowed to go out there and protest the shutdown, mm -hmm. right? Um, why? What the hell is the difference? There is no difference. It is outright hypocrisy. Logically, there's no difference. <laughs> yeah. But when you're pushing an agenda. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is more important. The, the virus in America is racism. That's really worse than COVID. Right. Yes. It's absolutely. worth putting your life at risk yes. in order to fight the massive amounts yeah. of racism we have where black people can't even it's walk not the outside their doors. Yeah. It's, it's not the hill they die on. It's the virus they die on. <laughs> uh, funerals. Holy crap. If there's one thing that just gets under my skin most of all 
but even even worse, I believe, than the protests is how many people have lost people due to depression and suicide, the virus itself, any other sickness during this shutdown, and you have to have drive-through funerals mm-hmm. or no funeral at all and hold off and hope that you can have a, a funeral later, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the meantime, John Lewis dies, and they have a massive, over 1,000-person funeral, including Barack Obama, and people traveling from all over the freaking country to come for that funeral. Mm-hmm. You have millions of people, in the end, gathering together, essentially, for George Floyd's funeral. Well, yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's uh, eulogy and um, little it's services weaker. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's okay. But... You are putting people's lives in danger if you want if you want to celebrate the life of someone that passed in your family. Mm-hmm. I've been twenty of your family members get together at a graveside to say goodbye. Yep. So unbelievable. Yeah. So this goes back to what we were talking about before. What was the original intention of flattening the curve? So that the hospitals wouldn't be overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. So that they wouldn't run out of beds and materials and PPE. Yeah. And we were not successful with that? Um, I think we were exceedingly successful with yeah. that. So, like I said, we're over almost 160 days now past the 15 day shutdown that was needed for us all to actively participate in to flatten the curve of not overwhelming the hospitals. Not only were hospitals not overwhelmed, we personally know healthcare people that, not on social media and everything, but will tell you in private, not only were there not people in the hospitals, or very few, that they had to furlough staff and not pay people because there were not enough things going on mm-hmm. in the hospitals. That people, that doctors and nurses were essentially having fun in the hospital waiting dancing. for something. Dancing, TikTok videos, yeah. dancing. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of TikTok yeah. videos out there celebrating. And um, I'm gonna take a quick second here. I'm probably gonna say something very controversial. You? <laughs> I, no, let me just say this right off the bat. I had cancer. And my nurses and doctors were phenomenal. Mostly the nurses, though. I had great doctors, but you barely see them. Yeah. You know what I mean? The nurses were phenomenal. God bless them. Honestly. It's not an easy job. Not an easy job, especially at my lowest point. (laughs) (laughs) And what they had to do to me. Hmm. That being said, this whole deifying, I don't know. I don't know how to put it, of like... Nurses and doctors are the essential workers of the economy. I get it. It's true, you know. But, you know, all these nurses and doctors getting on social media saying, stay stay at home, wait, stay, stay alive, stay at home, or stay home, stay alive, stay or something home, like that. Stay home, save lives. Yeah, stay home, stay alive, save lives. And, uh, I, and like, like... Stay home because I can't. Yes, exactly. Yeah, home all home that stuff. And pounding the pavement. I didn't, I didn't sign up for... What? What? That's what exactly do you mean you didn't? What you signed yeah, up for. That's like a that's like a soldier like go, being shipped off to war going, "What the hell is this? I didn't sign yeah. up for this." I signed up in a time of peace. I didn't sign <laughs> yeah. up for war. <laughs> like, what? That yeah. No, you this is what you signed up for and God bless you. I it, I completely mm-hmm. understand. I do believe that you're an essential worker. Again, the, what you're doing is essential. You're also putting food on your family's table. God bless you. You're essential. Mm-hmm. But to say that this isn't what you signed up for? I got news for you. There were pandemics before this one. It's not like this was a surprise. (laughs) You know, there are other viruses and stuff out there. Mm -hmm. This happens, okay? Origin of the virus, okay? This is the next topic that we're getting into. What happened with it? The the first things that we were hearing immediately was that this came from the wet markets over in China and Wuhan and everything. I I love Chinese people too, but come on. First though. What were you hearing first? I was hearing it came from a lab. That was the first thing I heard. And then like a week or so later, it was the bat at the market. Yes. Okay. So those are the two floating theories. I personally believe what I heard first was that it came from a wet market. Okay. And then it was... These crazy conspiracy theories of coming from a top secret lab or a, some sort of research lab secured or something lab, out there, a yeah. secured lab and everything. Well, was it released on purpose from there? Was it released by accident? 
I don't know, but Brett Weinstein, who is, uh, you, may under, you may know that name from what happened at Evergreen University over the last couple of years, um, was kicked out by the students and the faculty because he disagreed with a liberal policy, even though he happens to be one of the most liberal people. He's an evolution biologist, okay? Right off the bat, not going to agree with us on things, okay? <laughs> that being said, this guy, I believe, is one, to, one of... Um, the underground intellectuals today. I may not agree with him on everything. The guy is super smart. And it's it's not about what he believes, but how he believes it, how he has civil discourse with other people and can support his opinions and also understand theirs and mold with that, okay? Mm -hmm. Along with Jordan Peterson, Dave Rubin, Sam Harris, um, you know, I, I would even throw Steven Crowder into the mix there and everything. These are the intellectual underground. Joe Rogan, he's a meathead a little bit and everything, but he is able to bring those conversations in and ask the appropriate questions and intellectually be open to allowing these things. Well, Brett Weinstein happened to be on the Joe Rogan podcast uh, a little while ago, and they were actually talking about the virus. And I was blown away by an evolutionary biologist and what he said in regards to how he believes the virus came about. Okay. So let's take a look at what he said on the Joe Rogan podcast. Sure. When uh, it, se it seems to be an issue when someone says that it might have come out of a lab, this is a right wing, left wing thing. For whatever reason, you get labeled a, a right wing conspiracy theorist if you yeah. think it came out of a lab. Right. And you, you, people on the left, are so, they're so willing to dismiss that without any real evidence. For We've been poisoned by these these ideologies when it comes to conspiracy or whether or not something is actually true but we've been fed the wrong information that that stuff is if you don't believe the official narrative that's being s discussed on cnn you must be some sort of a, a right-wing nut right and um have I, you faced that oh, of course i've faced it I've, I've and i'm it's hard to escape it right so i've tried to be very careful i have described it as a hypothesis which is what it is I have tried to show that there are different probabilities for the different origin hypotheses. Even China now admits that it wasn't from the seafood market. Do they? Oh, yeah. What do they say it's from? Well... Don't they say it's from us? Uh, I have not heard that. I have. But they... Uh, let's put it this way. There are... One of the things that is, in my opinion, the strongest piece of evidence that, uh, that the lab leak uh, hypothesis may be correct is that there is a missing phase in the evolution of this virus. When a virus jumps from one species to another, it is not well positioned. It is typically very poor at its job because it doesn't have any evolutionary experience with that host. So it's not good at leaping between that host cells, which means that it's always in very small numbers, and it's not good at leaping from one individual to the next. That's the key question. When something leaps into a new species and then it becomes a pandemic, it's because it has solved that second problem. It has figured out how to infect that creature in such a way that the creature spreads it to others of its kind. There is no evidence in the case of this virus that that happened. It showed up in Wuhan and spread immediately. It became a pandemic. It already had experience. Now, how it got that experience, we don't know. There are evolutionary ways this could have happened, right? It could be that we have not found the initial population that it circulated in, right? Or it could be that it circulated in a creature that we haven't found either. But the fact that there is no evidence, that it shows up in Wuhan and immediately spreads, um, tells us that this virus was well adapted to our cells and well adapted to transmit between individuals. And that is conspicuous. One way you could get there is if somebody, A, had added components to a virus in order to make it transmissible to humans. So the research in question would be research that was interested in discovering what a pandemic in humans of a bat-borne coronavirus would be like so that we could do something about it. Maybe we could prevent it. Maybe we could create a vaccine ahead of time. But if you're creating a virus that has enhanced capacity to infect humans, 
in order to study what will happen if a virus ever escapes into the human population, then you are running the risk that the virus you are studying will escape. Would they have added something like a fern site? Absolutely. It is established in the literature that the addition of a fern site makes the virus much more transmissible in human tissue. So if you were going to study it, this would be high on your list of things to do. You could also passage it through human tissue in order um, to effectively train it on uh, the infectious pathway inside of people, which again, we might be suffering the downstream consequences of that if it escaped uh, the Wuhan Institute of Virology. That's very nerdy talk. I get it, you know. Uh, but what he's saying is, and what I would encourage you to do is go to the Joe Rogan podcast uh, and watch that interview, which typically the Joe Rogan podcast is about three hours and everything. And they talk about the virus a lot more than just that. So uh, I would encourage you to head to that podcast to watch more of that interview. But one of the things that he was saying right there is that typically in the evolution of a virus or how the virus starts to spread more rapidly is if it's going to go uh, outside of the, sp the original species range, it's, it's tough to do. It's hard to make that jump to the next species. So if it happens, it's not as potent to killing people. They get very sick and it's fewer people that get sick and it takes a while for that to, to for that virus to adapt enough to keep on going to mm -hmm. different species, right? And or get that explosive and out of control. Whereas this one was instant. Right. It had some sort of history with human tissue somewhere. So, so if it jumped no from a bat to a person, it wouldn't have spread person to person so quickly. So that exactly. supports the idea the lab. that it came from a lab. Yep. Social responses to the virus is my next topic <laughs> range. Um, pretty funny. So I was actually just going to bring this up. I, I meant to say it right in the beginning there, but this is actually just another area that I could throw this in. Um, I found it funny, and we won't mention names. It's it's not that important or anything. You catch a lot of heat online for the things that you post uh, in regards to masks and the virus and everything. And one of those responses happened to be from one of my friends uh, from the past and everything, who I still consider a friend and it's a friendly family and everything. And you had voiced your opinion, and you took great offense when the remark was, well, of course you're outspoken because you're married to Ford. I happened to find that funny. <laughs> uh, because in the end, it, like, with, um, I, I mean, I, my charts here and everything, you know what I mean? Like, if, if what you're going to say, and again, I don't take it as, as an uh, offensive or, or anything like that. If what you're going to say is that I'm a person who happens to put a lot of time into research and, and looking into things and hearing different opinions and putting it all together and constructing an argument and being vocal about my, my position, uh, out there and putting my voice out there and having the courage to do so, especially when I'm swimming against the tide in most mm -hmm. social circumstances, instead of riding the log down with the flow. Uh, if, if that's your idea of being offensive that I am outspoken, then you find it odd. I don't. I, I think that that's a great characteristic that I have found an outlet for me to uh, voice my opinion on something. So I didn't find it offensive at all. Well, I know you. The, the point was you had brought up that, was it Wines, whoever that man was, that he can have intelligent discussions with people who disagree right. with yep. him. And that's a lost art. Oh, and really, can, yeah. I was just trying to understand where they were coming from and have an intelligent discussion mm -hmm. but it was like a, you can't of course you run your mouth you're married yeah. to ford and I was yeah. like, oh okay well she like, didn't say run your mouth like that well, but but uh but it's not the only person either i mean uh we have both seen our friends numbers <laughs> drop and but that's okay <laughs> and it, that's okay with me because it's i i created a meme that i put up on uh instagram it was taking stephen crowder's sign and it said if you defriended me on face on social media that says more about you than it says about me. Oh, you Changed my that. mind. I, I oh, created that. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, and I, and I said, that. listen, uh, my opinions are my own. I look for intelligent conversations. I, you, you were witness to someone that I've never actually talked to in person who went to my high school that I video chatted with. 
ex- he's on the extreme left, right? Mm-hmm. And he was laughing at some of the comments. I said, hey, well, hold on, hold on. You know, the text can be uh, misinterpreted. Why don't we video chat about this topic? Um, I forget what it was even about. To be, I think it was the virus. I think we were talking right in the beginning of the virus and everything, and he couldn't understand my position. We video chatted, and he said, Chris, you know, I really appreciate being able to talk to you civilly about this stuff. And I'm looking for that all the time. I'm looking to expand my horizons intellectually on finding out different things, finding out why people feel the way that they do, digging in and mm-hmm. picking it apart, having them pick me apart. I should be able to withstand a storm and hold up for my opinion if someone's tearing it down, trying to find the multiple layers of this crazy onion right here, that I should be able to support it down to my core. No matter what questions come out. And if those questions come out and I don't know the answer to, I'm going to be honest and say I don't know the answer, but I will get back to you. I need to look into it a little bit more. But nobody wants to put that effort in. Or it, it's no, hard to find all. somebody who wants to put that effort in. They just want to assume that if you disagree with them, you must be evil and want terrible things for other people. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just coming at it from a different world. Yeah, you just view. want people to die. Yes. You're <laughs> selfish and you want people to die. So social, uh, social interactions are colder Absolutely. and more distant. When we go out and we see people wearing a mask, they could be the friendliest person on earth, but if I can't see your smile, emotions are shut off. Mm -hmm. You might as well be talking to each other online. You know, I can't see your smile. I can't see if you're angry. I don't know if you're winding up to hit me or winding up to give me a hug. You know what I mean? It's cold. It's distant, um, especially literally distant. You have to stay six feet apart and people shuffle away from you in the grocery store. God forbid you go against one of the arrows that's taped down to the grocery store aisle. (laughs) People are moving out of cities. This is another big one. Um, and I don't think that this has just to do with a virus. I think it has a lot to do with the Black Lives Matter movement, the riots, the looting. The Obviously, I'm not going to, I don't believe that I'm going to get into doing a Black Lives Matter podcast. I think what needs to be said is out there in different outlets and everything. I will tell you personally, I believe that those that say Black Lives Matter, distinguishing that from the Black Lives Matter organization, which I do believe is a domestic terrorist group, I do believe that Black Lives Matter. I do not support Black Lives right. Matter. And there's an important distinction. Yes. And uh, I believe that those people that say Black Lives Matter are different from the rioters and looters. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a mix sometimes. But I would love to see the left and the Black Lives Matter movement come out against the looters that are destroying the neighborhoods that they're supposed to be protecting and saving. Well, I think a lot of people hear the slogan, like, that's a good slogan. I agree with that yeah. slogan. I must agree with the organization. Yeah. And that's just not. not or again, all. if you don't agree with the organization, you don't believe Black Lives Matter, you're yeah, evil. Read their charter on yeah, the website. It, it does Destroy not the nuclear the family, yeah. abortions. It's just all over the place. But yes, anyway, people are moving outside of the cities. They want to get away from the violence. They they realize that being packed in like a uh, like a refrigerator on top of each other, uh, a meat cart, if you will, that a virus can spread very easily in that environment. That the violence that just Wait, circulates. Why did it take this to figure out that a virus can spread easily in that environment? Because we have colds, we have flu. Yeah, but we the, the like, liberals. Uh, well, it goes back to because this put a magnifying glass on that. Yeah, absolutely, and they also can't, they, they don't go outside their bubble yeah. we know that I know that I have a friend in Philadelphia <laughs> who saw a groundhog and thought it was a beaver because you don't get out into nature enough <laughs> yes, you don't. you're not out here in the country yes. with us you know I mean? oh my gosh there's a beaver it's I mean that be- would have been impressive not a beaver, beaver bro yeah that's a that's a groundhog I've shot enough <gasps> what, what? So they're moving outside the cities or getting outside the cities and they're infecting the rest of us. We live here in the Poconos. What do we see? New York license plates, New Jersey license plates, people coming up from Philadelphia. They're getting outside the cities and vacationing in the Poconos to try and out survive this virus Mm -hmm. and not be locked into the cities. And there's, there's a lot of people that are trying to escape the cities for all this all around the country. It's not just going to the Poconos here or anything, but the crazy thing is when you talk to real estate agents, I just had a call with my real estate agent friend that I worked with as a client yesterday. 
And I, he called me and I said, how's it going? He goes, Chris, you wouldn't believe it. It is crazy. I've never been this busy. I said, good for you. Let me tell you why. I said, they're trying to get out of the cities. There's a lot of places that are going tens of thousands of dollars over asking price because of bidding wars from people trying to get outside the cities that are, that are going sight sold sight unseen or just doing virtual tours and buying it or right off of that just a walkthrough tour he said chris i've done many of those already this year yeah i mean we know people who their house wasn't even on the market yet they were just talking to a real estate agent and they already had offers yep so i mean if, if you're gonna sell your house how the times to do it it's a it's a double edged sword. This is something right. that James and I were talking about this week, which is I that actually I had more of a fear of that than anything else right now. Okay, I don't want them bringing their crappy policies that they voted for. Right, and, so they're going to move here and then continue and to vote bring the their world. BS yeah. voting style with them. Yeah, into our neighborhoods because they can't see that what they have been voting for has caused a lot of the issues. There, there's places California, right? I don't know if you heard this. California, they've been they've been raising their taxes astronomically. If if taken alone as uh, its own country, I need to get going on this. Then, as taken alone as its own country, would be the twelfth largest economy in the world if you count it as its own country. And yet they are in debt all the time. You look at the worst country uh, cities around the country, all Democrat run, mm -hmm. right? And. These people, the California, I believe they want to extend, if you leave the state, extend the income tax that you pay one more year out after you move out. Gosh, is that legal? That was the last time I heard it. Today I heard that they're shooting for 10 years out. So you can't leave. So they, they, well, like, they're trying the to restrict point? it. Yeah. How is that even constitutional? That's what, yeah. That's not constitutional. If I left your state, not even one more day. You're not, I'm not giving you a damn, take me to court. I will sue you, you bastards. This is ridiculous. This is insanity, what we're going mm -hmm. through right now. And and you know what? I almost, I actually, a double-edged sword again. I don't know. If it's to keep them there, keep your BS policies that you vote for. Maybe you do stay there. I don't want you, I don't want you out here in middle America that you call a flyover country with a bunch of rednecks like us all this time. Now you want to move out with us and bring your BS with to us? No, screw it. Sit in the pot that you started to boil and fry with it. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of this crap. You know? You're a little fired up. <laughs> I, I'm hot. I'm fe I feel it. I'm hot. Suicide, domestic abuse, substance abuse, crime rates, all these things are up drastically. So let's, oops, I need to be on here. Okay. So let's take a look here. According to News 4 in Nashville, by the way, anything that I reference in regards to these articles, I fully expect that this video is going to get shut down. I'm just telling you right now, we're going to have that black doctor on that was down, that was down in DC. Yeah. That thing, that video has been shut down. I'm going to play Everywhere. that clip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it. I'll probably get shut down just because of that. There's a couple other things in here that'll probably shut it down too. The fact is I'm going to put a link in the description for this video on YouTube and uh, to all the articles that I'm referencing, because I don't want you thinking that I'm pulling things from my rear end. I want you to go to those links. Sometimes there's even videos on those that I couldn't pull off off of the internet that you should watch as well. Uh, this is according to News 4 in Nashville. Mental health issues, domestic violence on the rise during COVID-19 virus. This is down in Nashville. Uh, it says, former U.S. Representative Patrick Kennedy, a Democrat of Rhode Island, said calls to suicide hotlines are up over 800% and the overdose rate is up substantially. Okay, and I'm just going to keep on going. You can look more into that by looking at the link. This is, according to the Foundation for Economic Education, domestic violence more than doubled under lockdowns, new study finds. Um, increased drug use. Analyze, uh, analyzing government mandated lockdowns in India, researchers Saravana Ravindran and Manisha Shah found evidence of a 131% increase in the complaints of domestic violence in May 2020 in red zone districts or districts that experienced the strictest lockdown measures relative to districts that had less strict measures, which are referenced as green zones. So what we have uh, it says also here, a study analyzing data from police departments in four U.S. cities showed smaller increases in domestic violence, 10 to 27% more during the lockdown periods. This was written 
in July, at the end of July. Uh, any kind of increase is bad. But the fact of the matter is you're locking, we talked about suicides. Suicides are up drastically. Even in a small pool, it may be um, anecdotal evidence as far as what I'm experiencing, mm -hmm. but that, that these little pockets are representative of, of a bigger picture that's going on. The fact of the matter is that a lot of these families have been locked down into their homes, whereas sometimes educational schools were an escape for children to get out of the house mm -hmm. and, and get out of a, maybe a bad situation at home. Uh, people working and going off to work, whether the wife stayed home or husband stayed home and the other one went off to work, whoever it was, or maybe they both went off to work, it wasn't packing in a bad domestic situation between the spouses and everything but now you have everyone locked into a place you have fear driven anxiety mm -hmm. and just perpetuating domestic abuse substance abuse people uh, like remember what was what was sold out the most at the beginning of this pandemic two toilet things paper. toilet paper water water Alcohol. The liquor stores were well, selling out of everything. They shut the liquor stores down. Yeah, but once they opened up again, they off the shelf. Yeah. Lines out the building. Mm -hmm. We saw the lines out the building around here. Ammo. Yeah, ammo. <laughs> Guns. You know, great combination there. I'm a, a Second Amendment person. We have person, people but. extremely stressed out, but I mean, there have been phases in our life where we've been home a lot together, and I mean, <laughs> it. <laughs> With anybody, it's hard to spend that much time non-stop, and then you also add in such a stressful, you know, environment, and then people are losing their jobs, mm -hmm. you know, they're stressed out because they can't provide for their families, they're stressed out because they're told if they leave their house, they're going to die or bring it back and kill their families doing it, and they're so stressed out, so... You know, couples who already are not getting along and then you throw them in together with all that stress, I mean, it's just going to cause a whole lot more problems. So it's not a surprise at all that domestic violence has gone mm -hmm. way up. Um, and you had mentioned the suicide, too. Again, it's kind of anecdotal, but um, a small church that we've been visiting, maybe a couple mm -hmm. hundred parishioners, he said just one or two Sundays ago that... They have had not had a single case of COVID in their church, but he has barely... Without masks. Without they don't mass. require yeah, masks. They don't require masks. So they have not seen a single case of COVID, but he has buried two people because of suicide. And I think that's very telling. And I think mm -hmm. the fact that a lot of people are ignoring that or acting like it's not that big of a deal, like, it's... It's sad. And you know that when I'm working and I drive so much and everything, I happen to listen to crime podcasts as a, an escape of reality for more reality, I guess you could say, and everything. But the one thing I've been saying, too, is that I believe once this lockdown truly ends, because it's not really done, it's not really done. Uh, you're going to find that there's a lot of missing people. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's expected to be at home and people just kind of fall off the grid. No one's allowed to visit each other. So people kind of fall out of touch with each other. And I truly believe there's going to be a lot of people missing out there that like because of that domestic abuse situations that and everything. you saw every single day at work. If and you, then if they weren't the there, you'd down, know it. Yeah, you haven't noticed, and then you go back to work. Oh, well, she didn't come back. Okay. Has like, anyone checked up on her? No, we haven't heard from her. We just assumed she left the company. Yeah. And, you know, you look at our, our family situation and everything. Now, we don't adhere to it because we give our my parents and your parents the choice for mm -hmm. having us and our kids around and everything. But we have other family members on those sides that are like, you're you're putting your uh, our parents at risk and everything. And it's like, you know... They're grown adults. It's a free they freaking country. Yeah, um, they're not yeah. my kids. I'm not going to order them around. Communism only works in the nuclear family, <laughs> you know? So... Uh, what are you trying to say there? <laughs> that I'm a da I'm a commie leader in here. Um, I'm the ruler, the supreme. I'm the supreme ruler. <laughs> Um, okay, so speaking of the social interactions and everything, uh, going back to the education, especially with what you're dealing with and everything, there was a Pennsylvania teacher in Philadelphia that was lamenting that parents could hear the school topics while at home. <sighs> if there is not a better reason to homeschool than listening to this BS. It says a Philadelphia public teacher is curious about how educators will cope with conservative parents, those bastards, listening in on virtual classes, according to a thread captured on Twitter. Um, 
He said, so this fall, virtual classes, virtual, virtual class discussions will have many potential spectators, parents, siblings, etc., in the same room. We'll never be quite sure who is overhearing the discourse. What does this do for our equity inclusion work? Kay tweeted. Uh, How much have students depended on the somewhat secure barriers of our physical classrooms to encourage vulnerability? How many of us have installed some version of what happens here stays here to help this? Oh my gosh. There should be nothing that you should be saying to my kid that I cannot hear to. Absolutely. And if you don't want me to hear it, you should not be saying it to my child. Yep. Says while Kay acknowledged that damage can come from the left too, he noted that conservative parents are his chief concern when teachers are engaging in the messy work of destabilizing a kid's racism or homophobia or transphobia. While conversations about race in my wheelhouse and remain and remain a concern in this no walls environment, I am most intrigued by the damage that helicopter snowplow parents can do in the host conversation about gender and sexuality. And while conservative parents are my chief concern, I know that the damage can come from the left too. If we are engaged in the messy work of destabilizing a kid's racism or homophobia or transphobia, how much do we want their classmates' parents piling on? Again, it's exactly what you said. It, that stuff is not education anyway. You, not. That is indoctrination. Absolutely. It is not Oh, well, it's considered education because we're touching upon the equality and and inclusion of people and how you should treat... No, 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 no. You leave that to the parents. It's the parent's job to teach um, values and, and there's There's crappy parents out there that don't oh, yeah. t- teach morals to their kids and everything, yeah. and they rely on the school to do that stuff, but that... That doesn't give you an excuse. It doesn't give you a pass to pass the buck onto a school district that you consider at that point, if you don't know this stuff is going on, you are counting on that being a babysitter, not a teacher. Mm -hmm. And you're counting on them doing the moral teaching of your children. We know, and the reason why we pulled our kids out of school is because the thread of morality that we put into our children is unraveled by those that are teaching inside the school all day long. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's not every teacher. I'm not saying that. I'm making not making a generalized statement. The but the curriculum it's itself in, yeah. does it. It's in the environment. Um, yeah, they work it into every mo- every subject, every everything they can. They work it in, and it, it kind of reminds me of whose child is it? Who mm-hmm. does that child belong to? Does it belong to the parents, or does it belong to the teacher, or or the school? Um, ultimately, the children belong to the parents. We still have parental rights in this country. And yeah, that's just absurd. And there was just a case in Tennessee where parents had to sign a waiver Mm -hmm. saying that they wouldn't listen into classes. And I mean, if I get that waiver at home, I am absolutely (laughs) listening into those classes. Yeah. But I think it. I'll be on screen. Yeah, sitting right next to my child. Just looking. Don't worry, I won't chime in (laughs) unless you screw up. Um, But I think as long, we talked about it's a wake-up call for parents to realize that there are other options. It's also a wake-up call for parents to realize what is being taught in these schools and who really is in charge of their child. And if you're handing your child over for seven, eight hours a day, who is teaching your child? Who is in charge and really instilling those values? Um, I mean, you can try your best at home, but they're working all day long to unravel that. Even more than that, it's also going to spotlight how many parents really don't care about their kids' Mm -hmm. education. You know what I mean? If you don't know what's going on and this hasn't spotlighted or brought to the surface that you should be paying attention and that some of these things are catching you off guard, well, what? Well, that, no, what do you mean that's being taught in my kid's school? You are way out of loop, the loop at this point. We moved back into my homeschool district because of the style that it was more conservative area, that we depended on that to be kind of outside the bubble of liberal education, that if that bubble were to expand, it might happen slowly or something, and it didn't. The parents who do care and are involved, they always think it's not my school. Mm-hmm. My school is like, that's going on over there. That's going on in Tennessee. It's going on in Philadelphia. But that's not going on in my child's school. No. Um, but it's hard to see it. And you're not going to see it unless you're sitting in on those classes. Or the old school mentality of maybe someone that's older than us thinking that education is still the same way it was when they were a kid. Yeah, that it hasn't changed yeah. much. But if you're I mean, it's bad enough when uh, the generation before us believes that. But 
you have people in our generation that still feel that that are closer because we're only one generation removed at this point yeah. that the education is still the same, and it is not. It's so at vastly all. different. It's completely different, mm-hmm. and and it's. I think it would truly shock people to actually go and sit in on a school board meeting like it's their civic duty to at some point in time mm-hmm. and listen to what's going on in their own communities well, and not, what their tax it's, dollars. It's also are going the quality towards. of education just is not there. We're graduating kids who can barely read. Yeah. Um, we, they couldn't pass a, a, a third grade civics test that they would have given back in the early 1900s yeah. today. We, we know a college professor who teaches math, and he says his first year is always reteaching high school level math. He doesn't teach college level math until later on. And that, that's it's a waste of time. Yeah. You know, if these kids can't pass high school level math, they should not be graduating. And why can't they pass it? Because the standards have been lowered yep. so low. So we're, we're off of the virus topic for a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> but it also feeds into what I, what I alluded to earlier in the intro and everything of we're teaching kids morally, tying back right back into the conversation we were just having, to be bullied. The people that always railed against bullying are teaching kids to be bullies. Okay, here's an example. Our health secretary was encouraging people make it socially unacceptable to walk around without a mask. So that's essentially saying bully people until they feel like they can't do that. There is this tweet coming from Speranza. uh, Retroition. Retroition? Yeah. At Retroition. I give my kids 50 cents every time they see an unmasked person and loudly say, why isn't that person wearing a mask, mom? Highly recommend. One of the responses here was, my eight-year-old looked at a man in the airport when I had to fly her to her dad's for the summer. Oh, look, at it. it's already a broken home situation, so off to a good start. And the sass came out in three ways. First, she would constantly ask why someone was, wasn't wearing a mask loudly. It's not like it's hard. Second, standing in line to get food, she noticed some guy behind us wasn't adhering to the six feet guidelines she turned to him six feet please i'm I'm gonna give the voice i know what these (laughs) little sassy little bastards sound like he was so surprised he stepped back automatically but then glared at me as i shrugged rules are rules dude she did say please third a woman sneezed on the other side of the terminal waiting area she was joined by a couple other kids for this one if you cough or sneeze use your elbow please Honestly, half of us were trembling to keep in the laughter, and the others were just shocked to hear kids speak up like that. No, what you're doing is you're teaching your kids to be little assholes. Little bullies, yeah. That's all there is to it, Mm -hmm. okay? There's... You you want to control your own sphere? What's going on with your kids? Listen, we've had we've had instances where we will put on a mask if we're asked to, right? Mm-hmm. And we go into a store and everything, and our kids will try to stand up and everything against it. Mm-hmm. But I think that's wrong for our kids to say something back to an adult or anything you like that. You still need to respect adults. You, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in the case of like that. Um, I don't even know where I would fit this in. This well, really, be... it's the parents are too shy to stand up, so they're using their kid to do it. No, I think I think that they they would have done it without their kid there, and that their kid is just a reflection of what of they're themselves. watching their yeah. parents do and everything. And it's uh, you know it's what I said before. How many how many years did I sit on a school board where bully anti bullying was this mm-hmm. this agenda that was going on, and to you know not do this kind of thing. You can bully it's, against things that that fit your agenda. Uh, yeah, but, but if they don't, then you can't. Bully then it's that. open season. Yeah. it's open season. You know, so you're indoctrinating your kids. That's that's all there yeah. is to it. You're teaching your kid to be a little a-hole. That's what it comes down to. Rather than teaching them to show grace to people who think differently. Yeah. You know, they might not be following the same rules that we think are very important, but let's just stand over here and give them their space. Yeah. And let them live their life. Yeah. And if you're that freaking scared, go home. Stay home. <laughs> um, 
school choice is brought to attention. Actually, I don't know if you saw President Trump the other day. He was talking about, yeah, you know, uh, I believe that, you know, with the shutdowns and everything, schools are acting all differently and everything. And that personally, I believe the tax dollars should be tied to the child and, you know, the ultimate decision with the family on where they send their kids, the money should follow the kids. Amen. That's what oh, we've been fine. saying for freaking years now. Yeah. You know, like, just goes along with that. Next topic, misleading data when it comes to all this. Mm-hmm. So let's listen to Steven Crowder, as I mentioned, on Louder with Crowder. You can go back and watch this uh, this show and everything if you'd like. But let's listen to what he has to say about some of the misleading figures and everything. Last night I was looking at going, like, well, uh, people who have the flu must be compromised. Right. So how many people are dying just from the flu? And I noticed we can have this overlay right here. This is the CDC image um, that flu deaths and pneumonia, they've gone down to effectively zero. Hmm. Oh, that's weird. I, it's when like I checked in at the CDC. Historically, decades, yes. no one's getting the flu this year? Right. Wow. None. Huh. Now, weird. here's the thing. I wanted very to strange. assume, as usual, that I'm wrong, but Reg, our researcher, is very smart. So I looked, I'm like, well, zero. I said, okay, well, maybe what's happening is just, um, well, no, that doesn't make sense because more people would be tested for the flu going in, right? If they're being right. tested for yeah. COVID, you right. would think more people are being tested, maybe because of the social distancing. Can, can I pause you real quick? Yeah. More people are being tested for the flu because yes. so many, uh, most people who are going in for COVID testing aren't actually getting tested for COVID because they're reserving the test for the people who are higher risk or right. showing severe symptoms, but they have enough flu tests. So all of those people are being tested for the flu. So right. yes, yeah. 100%, we are right. doing more flu tests. Right. So the flu death rate is very low. We're testing for the right. flu. Well, okay. So you just cut me off at the past because I was, I was playing ah. devil's advocate with myself, but my actual advocate. Yes. Okay. No job. flu deaths. That's weird. Same thing with pneumonia. I said, maybe fewer people are getting tested. No, more people are getting tested. And keep in mind, too, also 7 to 15% of all flu deaths every year are some form of coronavirus. Not this novel coronavirus, but some form of coronavirus. That's why your Lysol and your mat cleaner says, hey, it kills coronavirus. Um, We've had 17,000 deaths recorded from coronavirus. Okay? So what this is telling us right now is that all of those flu deaths, all of those pneumonia deaths, Right, those are they're all being counted as coronavirus. So that's right. important to know. Everything's kind of being everything together. is being counted as coronavirus, yeah. even if they have these other conditions. And I thought, well, okay, that's not really fair because that's not the standard that we use in measuring deaths for anything else. For example, right. if someone has the flu and they also are going uh, undergoing uh, chemo treatment, right. we right. count yeah. cancer as the leading cause of death. So right away, that's tipping the numbers a little bit. But then it gets worse. Here's what I, I went to the CDC website after I saw that chart. And well, the flu death thing is weird. This is how they're counting deaths. A lot of people are saying, well, they're just, they're counting deaths uh, almost everything. They want to be liberal as Bricks, not Bricks, that's Hans Bricks. Burks just said. <laughs> this is from the CDC. <laughs> Bring this up to you, cute man. Your people will think I'm lying. In cases where a definite diagnosis of COVID 19 cannot be made, but it is suspected or likely, uh, compelling within a reasonable degree of certainty, it is acceptable to report COVID-19 under death certificate as probable or wow. presumed. In these insta- instances, certifiers should use their best clinical judgment in determining if a COVID-19 infection was likely. Mm-hmm. Huh. So That's very interesting. Not I, only I, are they lumping... Up? Just can can I sum that well, up? Well, hold on a second. Not, yes, just but, guess. What? Yes, just, just guess. guess. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Not only are they lumping in... So all of a sudden, go look at the charts. Flu deaths, boom, nothing. Right. Pneumonia deaths, boom, nothing now. All COVID deaths. Not only are they all being registered as COVID-19 deaths, but doctors can also, there you go, that was a chart from earlier, the flu's uh, dropping down. But they can also make a guess that, well, we assume that person died from COVID-19. Right. This is important for two reasons. Science is flawless. The scientific method is flawless. Human beings applying it are, are not. Do you not think for a second that some leftist activist who also happens to work in a hospital in New York is not going to take every single opportunity possible to try and label this a COVID-19 death if they are not required to actually show any proof of a positive test? Just think of what the media does with this. Mm. Or even even somebody who's one more thing. And then I want to go back one more thing. This, this is what's crazy about it, because you go, how can these models be so wrong? Uh, and maybe someone out there can totally correct me on this. Everything I've said here is just taken directly from the CDC website. They don't apply this same standard to infection rates. So they cannot assume that someone has COVID-19 unless they test positive. And we now know, according to the CDC, 20-something percent of people are asymptomatic. 80% of people have very mild symptoms. Wow. So... We cannot say, oh, that person didn't test. We didn't run a test, but we're pretty yeah. sure they have COVID because right now they're running all the flu tests, right? right? They are actually trying to eliminate possibilities. So they can guesstimate. I hate that word, but I'm using it because I want to piss people <laughs> off. <laughs> I get that it's redundant. Estimate is to make a guess. What's guesstimate? To make a shit 
We get it. So if we are saying <laughs> COVID-19 deaths, you can guess, but you cannot guess. You have to have proof of infection rate. Yeah. What do you think that does to the mortality rate, not the overall deaths? Far fewer, they're saying deaths are being underreported. No, 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 no. Infections are being underreported. Mm. For all we know, we could have two, three, four, ten times the amount of people right yeah. now out there with COVID-19. We cannot guess. We cannot estimate. No. But we can throw out numbers if we think within a reasonable, uh, uh, I guess, sort of barometer of suspicion that they could have had COVID-19. We list it as a COVID-19 death. So what can that do? That can take a mortality rate from 0.2%. 0.4% to 3% or 5%. And it's important to note that's what the models were based on. Okay. That's what the 2.5 million came from. And then the 100,000 to 240,000. So you can talk about social distancing all you want, and that is true. You should be taking your precautions. Wear your masks, which we said before they said you should wear masks. I said, I bet they're going to come out and say wear masks. <laughs> Nostradamus here, apparently. <laughs> a comic in a bathrobe. <laughs> said, I bet you the CDC is uh, going to change tack. But this is incredible that yeah. the models are based on yeah. this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep on going because uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Now, here's one of the other interesting things. Steve Dace, he is on the Blaze Network. He went over these uh, most recent statistics as of uh, August 13th of this year, 2020. 2.1% of ER visits in the USA are for COVID victims uh, via the CDC numbers. 1.9% of active cases are actually hospitalized. The U.S. has conducted 41 million more tests than the next highest country after us, okay? What does that mean? This kind of feeds back into what Steven Crowder was just talking about there, which is the fact that since we have tested more, more tests are going to show up positive mm -hmm. with the COVID number, being asymptomatic or, or uh, you know, mild, mild mm -hmm. symptoms, you know, past symptoms and everything mm -hmm. else. The more we test, the higher that number is going to go. And the mortality rate will then shrink because the more tests that we get out there showing that that virus is actually out there, more widespread, not as serious, and the mortality rate is obviously gonna change the same if you're counting the numbers correctly. His point is, they're not exactly counting those numbers correctly either, right. you know? Neither end are, are being counted correctly. Yeah. So your numbers are completely the skewed. The numbers are completely skewed, skewed all over the place. The mortality of the disease is uh, in regards to the number of cases divided by the number of deaths. Since July 1st, case fatality rate has dropped from 4.8% to 1.5%. In Europe, just to keep on track on what's going on between what we're doing and what Europe is doing, we're at 1.5% which that number's probably again skewed, Europe is at 1.5%. People think that with Asia, with the uh, what's going on over there and their mask wearing being habitual and everything, well, how the virus spread anyway from an Asian country in the first place, they're at actually 1.9%. So they're higher right now, statistically speaking, than us over here. Um, so there's also questions that are raised over the accuracy of the death tolls. This is according to Fox 6 in Milwaukee. It says questions raised over the accuracy of US, US coronavirus death tolls. There, there's a reason why some people believe the government officials are exaggerating the number of COVID-19 fatalities. One problem is a hodgepodge way states tally those numbers, uh, according to Fox News. Some states count presumed coronavirus deaths along with confirmed cases under the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention guidance issued last month. Other states don't count those deaths at all. Deaths have been classified as COVID-19 death even after a physician or loved ones reported otherwise. And those who died with COVID-19 have been included in the count with those who died of COVID-19, which we're actually going to talk about in regards to what's happening with Colorado. Now, one of the other things that's really interesting about this right here is some of the um, cases that have actually come up. Do you know that there's actually a case where a guy went to commit suicide, shot himself, didn't actually die from the suicide, ended up in the hospital where they tried to save his life. He eventually died from the gunshot wounds. He had COVID-19 in his system, and they listed it as a COVID-19 death. So mm -hmm. it's things like this that are blatantly guy obvious. guy died in a motorcycle accident, or, yeah. or and you know, I saw women on the news saying that their mom's death certificate says COVID, but she never had COVID. COVID. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is hospitals get paid. We're going to go into that. Okay. Hold on to that thought. Ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, beyond that, how can coronavirus models be so wrong is the next uh, headline here. According to Changing America, 
Um, it's saying as the number of coronavirus cases and deaths increase, the predictive models are updating their projections. In many cases, estimates for the number of cases and resulting deaths are decreasing as more specific information becomes available. Some of the uh, officials are suggesting even more recent numbers are undercounting the number of cases of COVID-19 in the United States. That sounds bad. It sounds like it's arguing against me. But the fact of the matter is, if we go back to what Stephen Crowder was saying, if the more cases are out there, but the mortality rate is staying the same, that, or as uh, staying a constant, the number of deaths, the number of yeah. deaths percentage-wise, that number is actually coming down, mm-hmm. and it's not as serious of a virus. Do you know as they what switched from be. the death count? Am I getting ahead of you again? No, they switched from the death count to the cases count yes. <laughs> because the number of deaths have gone way down. Yep. Yep. So now that's not as scary. Now we have to say how many people have the virus, and mm-hmm. that's scarier. Yep. Next article here, people test positive despite not being tested Mm -hmm. at all. Now, I want you to actually go into the link that I'm going to provide for this because this happens to be one of those videos that I couldn't do. It's from ABC7 down in Sarasota, Florida. And what was happening down there is truly amazing. Coronavirus continues to spread quickly across the state. And now in the Suncoast, although testing has been made more available, many say that there are some problems in really getting a handle on how much the virus is in our community. This woman said, I got a call asking for me, and they told me that I had tested positive, and I was like, positive for what? Then the lady said, for COVID, and I said, that's impossible. I never got tested, ma'am. Uh, Clark had gone to the drive through testing site in Manatee Rural Health, but before she was able to get swabbed, she left the line because she realized it was for people with symptoms only. I told them they needed to take this off my record, and they said I had to prove to it to them that I wasn't positive, Clark had said. Uh, she tested negative just two days later, and also tested negative for the antibodies. Plus, according to many of the viewers down there this hasn't only happened to her and it's happening many times over in the comments on the story people are saying that they went through the same damn thing that they got positive test results and never even got tested Mm -hmm. okay so what is going on it's it's not the fact again it's not the fact that i don't believe that there's a virus and that this virus has the potential to be deadly and everything it's that this mass panic and this this mass media push to instill fear and anxiety in people Mm -hmm. over what the actual facts are and what's actually happening. Thank God there's new sources like this. happens to be an ABC affiliate and everything that is actually reporting news because you know damn well that the national one, the ABC, CBS, NBC, Mm -hmm. uh, CNN, and all the MSNBC and all the other news sources out there, Huffington Post and BuzzFeed and all the other crap that is pushing out all the propaganda are not going to report on this stuff. You know, Tricare also contacted a bunch of their members saying that they had COVID and they it, it was a mistake. The email wasn't meant to go out, but you're sitting there and you get an email and it's saying that you have COVID and then you're like, I, I didn't get tested or maybe you did get tested. And then this email comes through. So it causes a whole lot of confusion when they can't keep their act together. We're still on the misleading data. So here, um, all this stuff is going on. Could this be because of hospital funding uh, scandals or controversies and everything? Well, according to ABC 10, uh, I don't know where this is out of, verify. The viewers were asking the question. They decided to do an investigative report and everything. Do hospitals get more funding by marketing death, marking deaths as COVID-19 related? Viewers have reached out to ABC 10 asking if hospitals are inflating the coronavirus death numbers to receive more funding. This is Sacramento, California, by the way. It's a claim passed on through word of mouth and social media that prompted ABC 10 viewers to reach out. One viewer reached out to ABC 10 and asked, people are saying that the report of deaths due to COVID-19 is false. People are saying that hospitals are getting funded if they say a death is is virus related. Is there any truth to this? Well, this has to be broken down into two parts according to ABC 10. The questions, do hospitals receive more funds if they say a death is related to COVID-19? And does this mean that the number of coronavirus deaths are false or inflated? Here's the answer. ABC 10 can verify that hospitals do get reimbursed for coronavirus related care, which unfortunately includes deaths. As for the second part of our viewer's question, a Medicare spokesman said it is unlikely claims with inaccurate diagnosis or DRG would be subject to recoupment and or other potential civil or criminal charges for false crimes. But how do you find that out? You can't. They're dead and buried at that point. And they're not going to go through all those thousands of people. Hell no. At this point. No. 
it'd so be cheaper far, just to pay it. <laughs> so far, it is unverified that hospitals are falsifying records for financial gain. But the fact of the matter is it's out there that they're getting tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. for COVID-related deaths and or treatments, mm -hmm. right? And that is confirmed even to us through people, again, that we know that work within the healthcare industry. Going on here. The naval ship Comfort was turned around after only one month in New York City. Okay, do you remember that? Mm hmm that was awesome that they sent it. Because yeah. at the time we were told the hospitals were going to be so overwhelmed and it yep. was going to be needed. The Navy's hospital ship Comfort departed New York City today, which, let me, what was this, April 30th. So this is an older article, but again, we're going over everything that's been going on and why the hell we're so worked up and don't trust everything that's going on. The Naval's hospital ship Comfort departed New York City today, May, April 30th, sorry, after spending the last month supporting the region's COVID-19 efforts. The ship arrived in New York's Pier 90 exactly one month ago with the mission of accepting non-coronavirus patients to alleviate the burden on the local hospitals, but a minimal number of patients admitted during the first week prompted officials to modify the ship's mission. Comfort was directed to begin accepting COVID-19 patients on April 6th, a decision that warranted an extensive layout reconfiguration to properly condone cordon off the coronavirus word from the rest of the vessel. The USNS Comfort arrived in New York City to provide relief to frontline health care providers and each patient who was brought aboard ensured one more bed was available in the local hospital according to Vice Ad is that Admiral? Admiral, yeah. Uh, Andrew Lewis, commander of the US Second Fleet, uh, according to a Navy release. Um, in the end in New York City, it ended up treating less than 200 patients. I heard it was actually less than 100 originally uh, when mm -hmm. I saw the stuff. I think it was under 20 COVID patients. I think originally the ones that they were treating, the reason why that number is at 200, I think is, is actually non-COVID related until they made that switch. And then it was under 20 cases. I think mm -hmm. it was 13 or something, or something like that. In New York, where they expected were, the worst outbreak. There were tent hospitals built all over the country oh, yeah, ready absolutely. for the overflow and again they never needed it absolutely so we kind of alluded to this earlier about colorado the state itself distinguishing in their records when they started doing the covid they were the first state to come out and do it i don't know if any states have followed up on this since and started doing this as well mm -hmm. but they were the first state to actually come out and say wow, these this is these numbers what are the numbers? Like, let's actually distinguish what are the number of deaths from COVID as, mm -hmm. as, as distinguished from the deaths with COVID and everything. Well, there was, there was a little bit of a di uh, disparity there. Colorado, this is according to, just so you know, just the news, uh, Colorado COVID-19 death count down almost 25%. That's a fourth off the numbers. As state, I uh, know I'm not homeschooled. It was public <laughs> education right there. As state differentiates dying with from dying from, Colorado health officials this week implemented a more precise coronavirus data metric, and that was on May 16th. Uh, metric to measure deaths from the virus in that state, one that sent confirmed COVID-19 fatalities tumbling by a full 25%. Now. I'm going to throw something else out there. I don't have an article to support this, but it's from what I understand, what I've heard. And so far, I've given the links and everything to all this information for you to find out. If you can find something different, then that's fine. I don't really care. The fact is that when you look at what Pennsylvania and New York governors did with putting the COVID patients mm -hmm. into the nursing homes, which was the, uh, the nuclear bomb of what went off with COVID and everything to the most vulnerable generation that could deal with it, mm -hmm. if you take those deaths off the table, because, you know, theoretically, or hypothetically, if you had done that and gotten those deaths out of there and everything, what would those numbers look like? Pretty much across the board, you're looking at about 25% again mm -hmm. in, in Pennsylvania and, and New York, you know? And that's just one thing I heard. So 25%, if we're looking at this high number that they're throwing out there and we're talking about 25% decrease on the numbers that we're looking at right now and taking a fourth off of those, that's a pretty crazy drastic change in the numbers. I mean, we're not mm -hmm. talking about small potatoes here, you know? Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Okay. There's a lot. There's a lot in here. Okay. Speaking of liars. Okay. And and, and the false statistics Ooh, and everything. We're going to talk about, we're gonna talk about Dr. Fauci uh. and the CDC lied initially to us about wearing the mask to protect essential workers. Right. So instead of reading to you what he said, let's actually listen to what he said. Now, getting back to your first question, which was what about months or so or two or three ago 
when people were saying, you don't really need to wear a mask. Well, the reason for that is that we were concerned, the public health community, and many people were saying this, were concerned that it was at a time when personal protective equipment, including the N95 masks and the surgical masks, were in very short supply. And we wanted to make sure that the people, namely the healthcare workers, who were brave enough to put themselves in harm ways to take care of people who you know were infected with the coronavirus and the danger of them getting infected, we did not want them to be without the equipment that they needed. Here's what Dr. Fauci just said. We said that masks weren't a requirement at the beginning of this to dissuade the public from getting the masks that we needed for our essential workers because we knew that they would need them. So he's basically saying, we lied to you then, but you can trust us well, now. Well, we're not lying to you now. Yeah, so if you, if you lie to us then, then you have set a precedent from the very foundation of this whole thing mm -hmm. that I can't trust a single damn thing that you're saying to us now. Because no matter what you come out with, masks are effective, masks aren't effective. The, uh, it, the sun, the UV rays kill it. No, they don't. Yes, they do. You go home. You have to stay in your house and it's not going to spread. Oh, now it's not good to stay in your house. Now you have to get out of the sunlight. All this kind of stuff, it keeps on changing six feet. No, 30 feet. Now you have to have a face shield on. Now you have to have this and Goggles. that all over the place. And it's, it's like your data keeps on changing, all right? And it's the same crap that you always deal with whenever you're arguing against science because science is always right because science is always changing. And if it changes, that's just new data. So you can't argue against us. We're never wrong, right? But in this case, Dr. Fauci just literally lied, admitted to a lie that he put out false information and didn't care about anyone else but the essential workers. But now we're supposed to trust the data that comes out from him and the CDC. So there's two things. One, we know a nurse who said that they had to throw out boxes of PPE, of N95 masks, because they were expired. So they use the same mask for, what did she say, a week? Mm -hmm. Which is disgusting because you're supposed to change it between each patient. So they're using the same mask for a week, yet they had to throw out expired masks. I would think an expired mask would be safer than a dirty mask. And at the same time, they're encouraging us to wear masks now because we care about other people, because we're unselfish. Well, couldn't you have used that reasoning in the first place? Mm -hmm. Care about other people, care about the healthcare workers, be unselfish, and leave the masks for them. Yep. I think a big chunk of people could use their unselfishness and not buy masks then, except now we have to wear them. To show that we're unselfish. Yep. No. Uh, beyond that, I mean, we're gonna we're the whole, there's a whole topic range here on in regards specifically to Trump and his his reaction and the reactions to him and everything mm -hmm. else. But the left likes to say that Trump has been lying to us from the beginning. That the the deaths are on him. The blood is it's on him. All his fault. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is Dr. Fauci back in February of this year when the outbreak was starting to happen. This is according to USA Today, the top disease official risk of coronavirus in the USA is minuscule. Skip the mask and wash your hands. This ties directly back into I mean, the line that he was saying. <laughs> yeah. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention will be testing for the coronavirus in people in five major cities who show up in clinics with flu-like symptoms but who test negative for the seasonal varieties. If that testing shows the virus has slipped into the country in places federal officials don't know about, we've got a problem, Dr. Anthony Fauci says. I'm sorry. <clears throat> we've got a problem. <laughs> Director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease uh, told USA Today's editorial, short of that, Fauci says, skip the mask unless you are contagious, don't worry about catching anything from Chinese products, and certainly don't avoid Chinese people or restaurants. Oh, that, that's, that's something that's going to come back with another person in, uh, in our government that said something along those lines as well. But Dr. Fauci seems to have been fibbing with us since the beginning. This is also according to the Infection Control Today. Homemade cloth masks, this just came out, are useless. What? Craziness. Oh, Lord. Okay. The article started out with the goal of trying to look at the literature related to cloth masks and healthcare, and then it got expanded way beyond into the cloth masks and surgical masks and respirators for healthcare and for the community. It was much more comprehensive than it, it was expected to be. 
And uh, she, this Lisa here says, took me a lot longer to write it out. In the end of the day, I was looking at cloth masks and the surgical masks and respirators from several different points of view. First of all, our healthcare and community, but also do they work as source control or do they work as personal protective equipment or both? And at the end of the day, cloth masks, in my opinion, don't work in, quote, any form mm -hmm. at all. So congratulations on everyone thinking that they have their at-home business of making it's cloth so masks. Nice. Well, no, but you know what? <laughs> Listen, if you feel that. like, you, yeah, hey, if you can make, that's capitalism. Of, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you want to sell to the idiots, that's fine with me. <laughs> make your money, honey. Um, okay, also, uh, okay, so this is, a, this is a whole new topic range, business responses, okay? Uh, one thing I heard, this is something on the radio, I was listening to a political program, a, a lawyer happened to call in and everything, and I found this really fascinating. I think that it can help out small business owners and entrepreneurs out there and everything. They made it very clear that it is small business owners, because of the shutdown and everything, were looking to file insurance claims for business closures and the harm of a business shutdown that was beyond their control and everything, and they were having a hard time because when you look into insurance policies, and I know this for a fact because of what I do for a living, that there's clauses, there's um, exclusions and things of that nature. And when you look through, believe it or not, even on your home policy and everything, there's acts of terrorism that are listed in there and everything. It's, it's insane. But they are covering all their bases because they do not want to pay out when they don't want to pay out. Fact is, in a lot of these insurance policies, there is a virus uh, clause in a lot of these business policies. So uh, the, the lawyer was pointing out the fact that if you're a business that was closed and you're trying to file an insurance claim for business um, interruption is what mm -hmm. it's called, business interruption, uh, you cannot in most cases file an insurance claim based on the virus. But what you can do is look at the business interruption due to the government. And the reason is, it is not the virus. Well, the reason why it's most important is, it is not the virus that shut you right. down. It is the government that shut you down. And if there's anything you should do, it's it's going after the government for it, whether it's a local or state. Now, the federal, that's a little different because obviously all the states have their different things going on and everything. But it's the same thing that comes back to what we have talked about in the past in regards to us being upset with things that are going on within our school district and everything. What are we going to do? So the school district, they just raise the millage on us and we end up paying for it in higher right. taxes and everything. And that's exactly what happens at the local and state governments and everything is what do you you get pissed off at them you sue them for the business closures and everything we can't hold wolf this a-hole accountable right. uh, for what's going on we sue him we sue his administration and everything we just end up paying out of our noses mm -hmm. in taxes here in pennsylvania we we end up screwing ourselves there has to be some sort if there's nothing else that has come from this there has to be some sort of spotlight on the fact that we have come to an area or a, a time and place in in our history of of the country and everything and everything that's going on that there that we have to seriously inspect under a microscope what's going on with how this kind of stuff impacts us that we can actually hold these officials literally accountable mm -hmm. themselves so that they don't make these sweeping decisions as dictators in each state that we can sue them personally for what's going on because in the end we're only screwing ourselves and what does that do it encourages them to mm -hmm. keep on doing what they're doing Right? There's nothing we can do. They know they can't. Yeah. They put the boot on us. I think that's an important distinction, too, is what you said. is it, The virus did not shut down anything. It was all government mandates. So, you know, when I hear commercials on the radio for the food bank asking, you know, because of COVID-19, there's a you know, higher demand on what we need. We need more do donations. Uh, it's not because of the virus. The virus didn't cause anybody to go hungry or lose their job. It was all the government shutdowns mm -hmm. causing that. And I, it, again, it builds on the narrative to not speak the truth. You know, because of the government shutdowns, we need more food. Yeah. That makes entire sense, but you're just pushing the narrative when you're calling it the virus. Here's the other thing, and this is, this is something that you and I differ on and we've argued about and everything, but businesses could have, could have opened up under their own mandates to ensure the safety of their employees and the customers without government intervention, which would have saved many of the businesses from closing for good. Um, speaking uh, you know, in regards to the business requirements and everything, if a business requires you to wear a mask and you don't want to, then you can go somewhere else with your money. You can't be a hypocrite and say that the businesses should be able to refuse businesses based on other factors, but not this, and at the same time, 
time, those who fight for businesses now for mask wearing are basically making the libertarian argument overall to refuse business for other reasons as well. Mm-hmm. You know, we have this conversation about, you know, do you respect it and walk in based on the signs and whatnot? And sometimes we have differing opinions on that. I, you know, it's, we, I think we both make great points. It's, it's just like off by a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Your point is if we accept this kind of mandate, mandated action now, then we're just allowing them to continue to grasp more but and more. A lot more of businesses have those signs because they're required to, not they, because they're they enforced, feel it, like not it's because law. they care. Well, yeah. not, they, feel like it's law but at the same time if they don't comply and mandate their their licenses are yep, pulled yep. and again that's their livelihood and it's not constitutional so they put the signs up but that doesn't mean that they enforce it except for when you get shamed into it <laughs> well yeah it, it's you it's and i was talking to friends about that today it's, it's more that the other customers cause more of an issue than the yep. actual workers yep I mean, I had one uh, employee at a uh, farming supply store (sighs) go off on me a little bit, an older guy, but whatever. Um, That's when I put my mesh mask on. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But this is amazing. Last month in July, uh, I heard from... um, it was, a, it was a business bureau or something like that, that as of the numbers and everything, 45% of businesses that have closed down have actually closed down for good. That was last month. This month, as of, uh, I'm sorry, that was July. This is as of July 22nd. Now that number is up to 55%, according to Market Watch. 55% of businesses closed on Yelp have shut down for good during the coronavirus pandemic. Okay? So... The old argument from liberals, again, some hypocrisy here and everything, is that if you allow these big corporations like Walmart and Amazon and all this stuff to take over and shut down mom and pop businesses, well, guess what? You just you just took the carpet right out from underneath mm-hmm. them with a virus that they could have been like having policies put into place to protect their employees and the customers and continue the operation, but you completely took that away from them. Who benefits from that? The big the Walmart's and the Walmarts yeah. of the world, and the, the mom and pop stores are they can be safer because they don't see the yeah. numbers. And they can, you know, I can it. go to Walmart and be in the same store with hundreds of people, or I can go to mom and pop and just run into one or two other people while I'm in there. Yep. Which one's safer? I mean, for instance, you know, Walmart is one of the ones that has been open through most of the yep. pandemic and everything, but somewhere like Kohl's. Right, mm-hmm. you can't go into Kohl's and buy clothing. But you can go to Walmart. But you can go to Walmart and buy clothing because they mm-hmm. have food there as well. Yeah. I mean, if I were Kohl's or any of these other stores, I would sue the crap out of these people. Mm-hmm. Not Walmart. You know, it's not. It's not no, Walmart. No, it's not Walmart. Fault, but you know? you know, it's worked out really well for them. Yeah, no kidding. And, I mean, Amazon. Walmart, Walmart is doing better than Amazon right now. Oh really? Yeah, because well, I mean, Amazon had to have skyrocketed. Oh yeah, absolutely. So. Oh my gosh, thank you for bringing that up. That is another one of the most, the biggest hypocrisies that I, yeah, I yeah, love I pointing out. Yeah. The fact that the stay at home, stay alive people, you just want people to die if you go out there by spreading your uh, the virus around and everything, are the same damn people that sit at home and go on Amazon and require people to be at the Amazon warehouses, people at Amazon delivering the packages and being out in the environment the doing that for them so that they can order from home. Mm-hmm. You hypocritic bastards. I yeah. freaking hate it. You are so snide. Oh my gosh. I, I hate it. There's I no hate possible it. way that you can't, nobody can go out of their homes. Yeah. You need certain things. Yeah. And then you need those people to deliver them to you so oh. you can stay in your house and stay safe. <laughs> that is one of my biggest pet peeves right there. Yeah. The, 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 uh, the blatant ignorance and arrogance because they don't take their argument and flush it out to the end no they're perfect human beings right you, Again, i mean if you look at everything on the, yeah on the surface level if you look at everything that immediately it sounds good you know i'm not going to go out and infect people i'm going to order everything in well you're not thinking about those people, those people that you rely on. it's kind of you know i used to work in television so you see the news anchor and you're like okay well that's the news anchor well you don't see the 10 people you know in the control room and on the cameras and out in the field well more than 10 but you don't see all those other mm-hmm. people in the background you just see the one so it's not the one delivery guy going out it's all the people behind the scenes supporting him too uh, that feeds right into another hypocrisy thing that you can find online people in the news 
that are out on beaches, out doing reports and everything, that are wearing masks on camera, and what's going on behind the camera? Their whole staff is not wearing masks, mm -hmm. right? You look at what's going on in Congress. There are pictures as doors are closing of Nancy Pelosi and her whole damn crew in there, and AOC and all of them, behind closed doors, right up against each other, not wearing masks. Mm -hmm. But in Congress on... Uh, C-SPAN, yep. you know, they're all in, uh, wearing masks in, in Congress and everything. Mm -hmm. <sighs> <sighs> okay. Crazy mandates is the next section here. Cuomo and Wolf. I'm trying to get through this as fast as possible. Cuomo and Wolf. Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo up in New York. Blame spreads. This is according to uh, the New York Times, actually. I know they're very conservative. Uh, blame spreads for nursing home deaths even as New York contains the virus. He's writing a book right now on yes. how to... On how well, how he, well did. he did. Screw you, you bastard. And you and your stupid brother, too. Fredo. I said it. <laughs> With more than 6,000 nursing home residents dying of the coronavirus, a fight over whether relatives should be allowed to sue has erupted in Albany. Sue, sue, sue. Yes. And, and make sure it goes right at the Cuomos. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, even uh, Chris Cuomo, Fredo, I'm sorry, Fredo, was ha apparently had the virus and was subject to his basement, yet was caught outside during that time uh, jogging or something like that through a park and then had this big coming out of his basement celebration to see his family finally which it turned out he never even had the virus he oh, lied. Really? they, he they lied that. about that it was a big show put on the, the absolute the balls mm -hmm. the balls it takes to do this stuff to the public is unbelievable to me so Cuomo is one of them that did this we also had it saying Republicans are saying uh, Republicans say requiring nursing homes to accept COVID-19 patients may have killed thousands of course it did. this is oh yeah of course this is also in regards to our governor here Governor mm -hmm. Wolf who is a, a one of the worst governors in the country and our Wolf, health secretary Cuomo yeah absolutely our health se secretary took their mother out of the nursing homes right before they were requiring nursing homes to take COVID patients. Yep. So they knew Knowingly. that it was going to be a problem and wanted Did to Did it anyway. Yeah. That is, if there isn't a punishable crime, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. You know? It, it should be murder. They should yes. be brought up on murder. Cause Pennsylvania. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, because you don't need a medical degree to know that if you put somebody who's contagious with a virus who that is very deadly for people who are old in a nursing home where everything is tight, it doesn't take much to know that that's going to yep. kill people. Yep. They just didn't care. Uh, Pennsylvania forced the nursing homes to take seniors who are COVID-19 positive from the hospital back into the nursing home, even knowing they couldn't properly take care of them. It was a death sentence for thousands of Pennsylvania seniors, according to U.S. Representative Steve Scalise of Louisiana on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just going to keep on rolling through here and everything. Speaking of uh, Dr. Levin and uh, what they did with their mother and everything, which we are, are obviously dodging around trying not to label uh, <laughs> what we believe on that, uh, sometimes referred to as the mad scientist in Independence Day and uh, something else it looks like that. You know what I mean? Uh, during this whole thing, to me, it was very obvious that the statement that they released in regards to transphobia was to take the pressure off of the fact that they were killing thousands in the nursing homes. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you know about this or no? Yeah. Okay. So a tweet put out by Dr. Levin, I feel that I must personally respond to the multiple incidents of hashtag LGBTQ harassment and specifically transphobia directed at me. Your actions perpetuate a spirit of intolerance and discrimination against LGBTQ individuals and specifically transgender individuals. I have no room in my heart for hatred and frankly, I do not have time for intolerance. That is really sweet of you. First. I wish that the thousands of people that you killed in the nursing homes could hear that message too. <laughs> and it also goes back to the bullying that we were talking about yeah. before. So intolerance and harassment is not okay unless it's directed at somebody who's not wearing a mask. Yeah, exactly. Because they are the ones and they, they put out... Um, like little cartoons about, oh, look, they're not wearing a mask. Oh, they're so selfish. 
Well, you're perpetuating and pushing the bullying and intolerance, but it's not okay if you do it against me. It's okay if you do it against mm -hmm. them. So we have New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Michigan governor. Mm -hmm. This is according to Michigan Live. Michiganders. Ooh, is that a thing? I yeah. don't know. Can't go back and forth to vacation homes under Governor Whitmore's latest stay-at-home order. Now, this was back in April, obviously. I think this has been lifted since then. But the governor at that point in time was saying, you have to stay in your home. You can't even go to another one of your More homes. homes. You mm -hmm. know, whether it's two or three, I don't even care. God bless those people. <laughs> Good, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> you know what I mean? But what's the reasoning? What the hell's the reasoning behind it? You don't have a good reason. It's hypocrisy. I mean, if you're going to be quarantined into your home, you might as well go to your vacation. Didn't her? Didn't they get caught going to their second home? And the husband said he had he had to do the leaves or something like that. That doesn't surprise me. But so they have and leaves, but even, nobody else does. It was not even fault. It's not even fault. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! But, I mean, like no one called them out on that. Second homes, they need to be maintained as well. Yeah. And you're suddenly off of work. You have time to go provide that maintenance. No, oh but no, nope, you can't do it. Um. Okay, so we're talking about crazy mandates here, Michigan governors. How about this one? Companies are starting to <laughs> some of them, not many of them. The these crazy ones. Companies are demanding that you wear a mask while at home. For the Zoom meetings. I thought that was, I only heard it was some like environmental association or something. The head of the Department for Natural Resources <laughs> is telling employees to wear face masks on teleconference, even when they're not around others and at no risk of spreading the coronavirus. This is according to the Milwaukee uh, Journal Sentinel. Natural Resources Secretary Preston Cole reminded employees in a July 31st email that Governor Tony Evers mask order was going into effect the next day. That means every DNR employee must wear a mask while in a DNR facility, noted Cole, an appointee of the Democratic governor. By the way, I don't know if you heard this one. There was actually an interview of uh, the virtual schooling from like the, <laughs> and they were having virtual fire drills for the buildings that they're not in oh at home from the computer. <laughs> is that where you pick up the phone, call 911, and say that building over there is on fire? No, they're supposed to know how to get out of a school when they're sitting in their own when house. They're not. <laughs> this one was one of my favorites, actually. Um, yeah. In Nevada, the casinos were allowed to open at 50% capacity. Percent. Okay, so 50% mm -hmm. capacity they were allowed to open up. So you can only let a certain amount in. But the churches were only allowed to open up to 50 parishioners. Okay? Oh. Total. That's a big difference. Yes. Yeah. Not percentage, total. So some Christians got creative mm -hmm. and uh, held church at a casino. Amen. <laughs> As the restrictions, and this is according to the post-millennial, uh, Christians hold church and casinos as restrictions on worship are tighter than those on gambling. Again, what the heck is the difference? I mean, there is a difference morally. There, right, but, but virusly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, socially distancing wise and everything, there's it's no not. difference. So there was a group of Christians in Pittsburgh that had a church service at a Walmart. Because they weren't allowed to get together at their church, but you could go to Walmart. So I think that's really creative. That I think that, that. I think they have to get creative, mm -hmm. Absolutely. and because I to think prove a point. And specifically, I do believe that Christians and churches are specifically being targeted during this Absolutely. whole thing. I, I, I have no doubt in my mind mm -hmm. on that. Okay, we're going to be getting into some of your type of uh, topics here mm -hmm. now. Alternative treatments. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. This is according to nutritioninsight.com. The headline is Vitamin C for Cure COVID-19. U.S. doctors and Chinese researchers trial intravenous doses. And this article was written in March. So why don't you tell me about what was going on at the beginning of this uh, virus outbreak and the U.S. doctors that happened to be over in China. Okay, so in the beginning of March, um, when this started really being prevalent around here, well, not, yeah, around here, because we had just gotten back from vacation. I was reading up on it because it, it was a concern. At that time, it seemed like it was devastating. Um, there were U.S. doctors in Wuhan treating COVID-19 patients in the ICU with 
IV vitamin C mm -hmm. and they had a zero mortality rate. That means every single patient came out of ICU and survived. Um, a lot of the studies with vitamin C is they don't use enough. Um, they'll use like 200 milligrams or something. Yeah, it's laughable. And, and then they say, oh, it well, Why is work. it laughable to us? It's laughable because, um, well, you take close to 10,000 milligrams a day. I take about uh, 6,000. So Our kids take three to 5,000. That's when we're healthy. Um, when we're sick. I, so, so I take 500 times. Yeah. What they're Just saying is curing healthy. people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so IV vitamin C, and it's interesting because I, I've been studying this for a little over a year now. They Every single virus they've put it up against, it has cured. Mm -hmm. So there isn't a single virus that doesn't react to IV vitamin C. And it, it's written research. It's out there. You can find it. It's in peer-reviewed journals, but they're not doing it in hospitals. What happened to those doctors, though, when they were so-called publishing their results on social media and stuff like that they they were pushed off the censored the, immediately censored yes absolutely or um people tried to debunk them oh well they're just a chinese you know of course the chinese are saying it's curable because they're trying to like diminish their impact well th this man he was chinese he was born in america mm -hmm. and he was um trained in our military that's where he got his medical degree so when he's over there he is helping the people of wuhan but he's an american doctor Mm -hmm. And why is he pushing something that would be harmful or, um, I, I guess, ineffective? And a worst case scenario is it, it's ineffective. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you try it and it doesn't work. But in March, again, when this all started, um, the people who take vitamins knew because we struggled to find vitamin C. It was sold out everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, the kind that we usually get was gone. I had to go to a different not not a different brand like a completely different version of vitamin c and stock up and it would take months to get here so people knew that it's effective um and, and the biggest problem with iv vitamin c is it's cheap you can't make much money off of it you can't patent it am i getting into something <laughs> no but i mean i i, I want to talk about that after this stuff yeah. because the other thing the vitamin that they keeps on mm -hmm. being brought up with all this is vitamin d vitamin which d comes from what the sun. Yeah. So when you tell people to sit in your house and not get vitamin D, you're setting people up to get sick and to end up hospitalized. Well, according to this article here, which is on ScienceDaily.com, you know, because we're big science deniers and everything, vitamin D levels appear to play a role in COVID-19 mortality rates. Patients with severe deficiency are twice as likely to experience major complications. But that's not unique to COVID-19. That's all no, right. yeah. Vitamin yep. D is, is essential for your immune system. So yep. if, you ha if you're deficient in vitamin C and in vitamin D, and really all vitamins because our food is crap, of course you're going to get a virus, and of course it's going to hit you harder than somebody who does eat healthy and is not deficient. And in really vitamins. at this point, if you don't take supplements of vitamins, you you're are deficient. deficient. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> in regards to that though, let me just see if there's one more thing here. Vitamin D. So, yeah, I mean, you brought up my next point, which was why the heck are we locking people down in the houses instead of encouraging them to actually get outside where vitamin D comes from the sun and everything. So that, to me, that, sh that proves this is not about your health because nobody is out there saying, if you eat healthy, it'll help fight this. If <laughs> you are out in the sun, it'll help fight this. If you're exercising and getting good sleep, nobody's saying any of that. It's put on a mask. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So what is and more And if effective? the mask doesn't work, it's really just a comfort emotional thing between people. Mm -hmm. I, you know? My mask makes you feel better, so I should wear I'm doing it. this for you, and you're yes. doing it for me. That, that's the smartest piece of propaganda I've heard. Mm -hmm. Which is, encourages the, the, bullying. the bullying. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, early on in the cases, it seems to be more. Uh, it seems to be effective to also use a hydroxychloroquine, but that has been shut down as much as possible simply because the president suggested as much. But we will get into that in a little bit because we're actually going to be talking about Trump specifically and all that. But there was a group of doctors. Do you remember what the group is called? 
No, not offhand. Okay. Uh, that showed up in DC to protest the ignorance of hydroxychloroquine. And we're going to take a look at that video right now and see what the specific doctor had to say, who was then torn to shreds over yeah. background and everything. But there's a, a single point that I want to bring up in regards to this. Then. But they didn't touch the other doctors. They tore her they apart. No, well, a little bit. Did, but yeah. and it, I think you have to remember when people speak out like this, it's not only them. There's mm -hmm. thousands of other people who are silent and don't yeah. want to risk their jobs. Oh, yeah, because they are trying to drag these people through the mm -hmm. mud, and especially they, this one. I think they knew it. They knew it when and they stood up. because she's black. Yeah, that's true. You can't so, question her. Yeah. <laughs> black doctors matter. Let's take a look. I came here to Washington, D.C. to tell America nobody needs to get sick. This virus has a cure. It is called hydroxychloroquine, zinc, and zitromax. I know you people want to talk about masks. Hello? You don't need masks. There is a cure. I know they don't want to open schools. No, you don't need to, people to be locked down. There is prevention and there is a cure. And let me tell you something. All you fake doctors out there that tell me, oh yeah, I want a double-blinded study. I just tell you, speak sounding like a computer, double-blinded, double-blinded. I don't know whether your chips are malfunctioning, but I'm a real doctor. I have radiologists, we have plastic surgeons, we have neurosurgeons like Sanjay Gupta saying, oh yeah, it doesn't work and it causes heart disease. Let me ask you, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, hear me. Have you ever seen a COVID patient? Have you ever treated anybody with hydroxychloroquine and they died from heart disease? When you do, come and talk to me. Because I sit down in my clinic every day and I see this patient walk in every day, scared to, scared to death. I see people driving two, three hours to my clinic because some ER doctor is scared of the Texas board or they are scared of something and they will not prescribe medication to these people. I tell all of you doctors that are sitting down and watching Americans die. You're like the good Nazi, the good what? The good Germans that watch Jews get killed and you do not speak up. If they come after me, they threaten me. They've threatened to, I mean, I've gotten all kinds of threats. Oh, they're going to report me to the boards. They're going to, I say, you know what? I don't care. I'm not going to let Americans die. And if this is the mountain, if this is the hill where I get nailed on, I will get nailed on it. I don't care. You can report me to the boards. You can kill me. You can do whatever. But I'm not going to let Americans die. And today I'm here to say it, that America, there is a cure for COVID. All this foolishness, it not, does not need to happen. There is a cure for COVID. There is a cure for COVID. It's called hydroxychloroquine. It's called zinc. It's called Zitromax. And it is time for the grassroots to wake up and say, no, we're not going to take this any longer. We're not going to die. Because let me tell you something. When somebody is dead, they are dead. They're not coming back tomorrow to have an argument. They're not coming back tomorrow to discuss the double-blinded study and the data. All of you doctors that are waiting for data, if six months down the line you actually found out that this data shows that this medication works, how about your patients that have died? You want a double-blinded study? When people are dying, it's unethical. So, guys, we don't need to die. There is a cure for COVID. You know, in regards to this doctor and everything, I, I'm sure you're going to talk. You want to talk about the double-blind study thing and, and why that's relevant and everything. But despite the, the information that came out in regards to her past, her background, things that she's looked at, things that she believes in, being a Christian, and, you know, she comes from, uh, do you know where she came from? Did she say Nigeria? Something like that. So yeah. she believes in, like, real evil spirits and, and stuff like that, which, what a crazy person, you know? <laughs> um, but, the, but on top of that, you know, uh, tearing apart her past and everything, it doesn't really matter in the context of things, because in the end, now you, you, you believe in the supplement angle, you believe mm -hmm in the vitamin angle and everything. You don't want to go the hydroxychloroquine angle. No. But if things got really bad and you're trying all the vitamin stuff that you can, the intravenous and everything else, and that's not working, would you be opposed to trying hydroxychloroquine? I mean, not opposed. I don't think it would get to that point. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but true. Yeah. But yes, right. It wouldn't be my first choice, but it, yeah. Point being here, no matter how much they tear apart this woman's past and everything, she has documented cases of 130 patients that she has treated preemptively with hydroxychloroquine and her and her staff do it and have not gotten sick mm -hmm. that have actually worked with no mortality mm -hmm. or fatalities. I guess okay. it's the same thing. Yeah. So, uh, so what she was doing, despite her background, was working. Yeah, and that's what all the other doctors say. It truly doesn't matter what she believes in, but she has shown that by treating her patients with this, she has had a good outcome. So you were talking about the double-blind <laughs> study. So if you have something that you know, like if you're sick 
and I have something that I know will cure you, it is immoral for me to hold that back just to see if you're going to die. So It has something to do with the Hippocratic Oath, right? Yeah, to do no harm. Mm-hmm. Well, me leaving you to die is doing harm. But if I know that I have this treatment that could work with very minimal side effects, I, I need to convey that to you and let you choose what you what you want to take. Mm-hmm. And I think that it does come down to patient choice is these doctors should be offering, we have this drug, these are the side effects, we think it will cure you, or we have good reason to think it will cure you, do you want to try it? And the same with the vitamin C, we have good reason to think this will cure you, there are no side effects. Do you want to try it? Uh, if you overdose, you poop more. Not on IV, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this issue, specifically hydroxychloroquine, has been politicized, though. Absolutely. Because Trump suggested the notion that maybe using this drug could prevent it or possibly treat it and everything, mm-hmm. the left and media immediately jumped on. It's, it's the old saying that we've been saying for the past four years. He could cure cancer and the liberals would be against it. it. Orange man bad. Yeah. It doesn't and matter it's, what he And it's, uh, it's become so politicized and everything that uh, Joe Rogan, again, I listened to his podcast, so I, I, I can keep on bringing him up because of things I've heard on his show. He actually has a friend. Um, I don't think he said who. I think it was a comedian or something like that, who went to the doctor and the doctor because he had covid and the doctor said to him uh if you don't mind me asking what is your political affiliation and the guy said well what does my political affiliation have to do with the virus he's like well i don't want to offend you or anything but there is some anecdotal evidence out there that hydroxychloroquine works and there's a lot of people of a political affiliation that don't want anything to do with that because of what's going on and the guy said i don't care cure me yeah. Get rid of this. Mm-hmm. You know, medicine should never be politicized. No, never. but that's what exactly what is happening mm-hmm. it, because everything is politicized now. Again, Sports, everything. The government needs to be out of medicine. The government yep. should have no influence whatsoever on what's between me and my doctor. Yep. So I saw a really good meme uh, today uh, that doctors and researchers can be bought off just as much as politicians can. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, Okay, so we talked about that. Uh, But, and this goes back to your point right here, which is what we kind of touched on a little bit. I said maybe the real reason why vitamins and drugs like hydroxychloroquine aren't being pushed is because new drugs and vaccines are better money makers for the pharmaceutical companies, whereas vitamins are inexpensive and more widely available. They've already put billions of dollars into this vaccine. It can't fail. They can't not come up with a vaccine. So they will come up with something Mm -hmm. to fill the gap because they'll make the money off of that and not the vitamins and unfortunately so most doctors don't even know that there are effective alternatives because they're most well doctors go to medical school and who publishes the medical textbooks the pharmaceutical companies so these doctors aren't even being trained that there's any other option so you kind of you have to give most doctors grace because they're getting their information from a very biased source that they're told is not biased so it, it, it's hard to weed through all of that mess mm-hmm. Okay, next topic area here is going over tr- President Trump and mm-hmm. the stuff that he's been going through especially being blamed from the beginning timeline wise he didn't act soon enough and everything well according to this timeline that i found here january 4th head of the university of hong kong center for infection warns that the city should implement the strictest possible monitoring system for a mystery new viral pneumonia that has infected dozens of people on the mainland and it is highly possible that the illness is spreading from human to human on the 6th the center for disease control issues a level one travel watch the lowest of its three levels for china's outbreak according to the university University of Minnesota. CDC said that there is cause, uh, said that the cause and the transmission mode aren't yet known, and it advised travelers to Wuhan to avoid living or dead animals, animal markets, and contact with sick people. January 8th, World Health Organization declares preliminary identification of novel virus in a short period of time is a notable achievement of the demonstrate and that and demonstrates China's increased capacity to manage new outbreaks because China did so damn good and they're obviously honest with their numbers all the time too. January 11th, China reports its first coronavirus death. 
January 14th, the WHO announces preliminary investigations conducted by the Chinese authorities have found no clear evidence of human-to-human transmission of the novel virus in, identified in Wuhan, China. This is the, the WHO. No human-to-human transmission. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, according to the Associated Press, internal Chinese documents show that the government officials acknowledged likely human-to-human transmission of the coronavirus and said that they were following orders from the president of China to keep it under wraps. Wow. So we can't question the who either. Nope. And uh, yeah, that's a whole other video. It's just going to take more time if I get into that. January 15th, Trump and China signed phase one of a trade deal to rein in a historic and damaging uh, trade war. January 6th, uh, 17th, I'm sorry, two days later, the CDC and the Department of Homeland Security announced that travelers into the U.S. from Wuhan will undergo new screening at several major airports. Two days later, January 19th, the WHO hedges somewhat. Not enough is known to draw definitive conclusions about how it is transmitted, the clinical features of the disease, the extent to which it has spread, or its source, which remains unknown. Well, we're starting to see that that's pretty clear BS. Three days later, January 22nd, Trump responds to whether he's concerned about a possible pandemic. No, not at all. We have it totally under control. Probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it's one person coming from in from China, and we have it under control. It's going to be just fine. I personally believe this virus has actually been around a lot longer. We happen to know people that happen to have these types of symptoms back in November and December of last year. Mm-hmm. Probably happened back then. There seems to be a timeline discrepancy there as well. Uh, Trump was referring to a resident from uh, this one county in Washington who came back from China on January 15th and was diagnosed with the coronavirus. Uh, one day later. Vox publishes an article stating that travel bans to fight viruses don't work. Vox, okay? The article initially referred to the Wuhan virus before being edited weeks later. Oh, we're going to get to that. (laughs) So good. The article's URL remains unchanged. China seals off Wuhan, canceling plane, train, and bus travel. Uh, Also at that time, Anthony Fauci, director of the NIA and Infectious Diseases, says in a journal of the American Medical Association podcast that the U.S. wouldn't implement draconian shutdowns of cities like what was occurring in China. There's no chance in the world that we could do that to Chicago or to New York or San Francisco, but they're doing it. Let's see what happens. January 24th, Trump tweets in praise of China's transparency. Uh, on April 1st, and this is jumping forward a little bit here, the Biden campaign mocked the president for the tweet and claimed Biden publicly warned Trump not to trust China. Funny. Politico reports on that same day that the Trump administration held a briefing on the coronavirus for senators. The initial thought from the Dems, I think, is, this is according to a GOP Senate aide, uh, is that we were trying to distract them from impeachment. That's what they thought was going on. The outlet added that a White House official recalled feeling surprised at the incredi- incredibly poor attendance, noting that it came even though the amount of concern expressed then was rather intense. Uh, This is also a tweet from President Trump. China has been working very hard to contain the coronavirus. The United States greatly appreciates our efforts and transparency. It will all work out well, in particular on behalf of the American people. I want to thank President Xi. Xi. Something. January 26th. The American people should not be worried or frightened by this. It is a very, very low risk to the United States, according to President Trump. Fauci. Fauci said that. Uh, the expert the you cannot cats, question. Yeah, the Cats Roundtable. It isn't something that the American public needs to worry about or be frightened about. These are his exact words. January 27th, one day later. Obviously, things are starting to heat up and go more drastically day by day. The Biden campaign, including its top coronavirus advisor, Ron Klain, praises China for being transparent and candid. That's funny. He got the Biden campaign... Uh, kind of chastised the uh, Trump campaign for doing the same thing just days earlier. Speaking to Axios, Klein asserts, I think that you'd have to say that China is, uh, it's been more transparent and more candid than it has been during past outbreaks. We're just going to keep on going here. January 28th, one day later after that. Three days before Trump closes off most travel from China, Klein 
uh, says he opposes that measure. January 30th, two days later, CNN published a piece by Brandon Tensley entitled Coronavirus Task Force, Another Example of Trump Administration's Lack of Diversity. Because diversity during this whole damn thing That's is what matters. <laughs> Tensley, who claims to cover the in- intersection of culture and politics, was unable to offer medical analysis in the article. The WHO also on that day declares a global health emergency and the State Department issues advisories against traveling to China. January 31st, Trump issues the proclamation of suspension of entry as immigrants and non-immigrants of persons who pose a risk of transmitting 2019 novel coronavirus. And later in the day, the Biden campaigns in Iowa and te- uh, campaigned in Iowa and tells the crowd that Americans need to have a president who they can trust what he says about it that he is going to act rationally about it. This is no time for Donald Trump's record of hysteria and xenophobia, hysterical xenophobia, and fear-mongering to lead the way instead of science. So all the criticisms coming from the Biden uh, campaign of not acting fast enough, he's clearly on the record on all this. Yeah, that that was a criticism of Trump in the beginning, was that he was being... um, Overactive, or uh, hyper... Hyperactive, yeah. yeah. Uh, Also in the wake of the ban on uh, January 31st, an article in the New York Times quotes Dr. Michael Osterholm as saying that Trump's decision to restrict travel from China was, quote, more of an emotional or political reaction. The Washington Post runs a story quoting a Chinese official asking for empathy and slamming the White House for acting, quote, in disregard of WHO recommendation against travel restrictions. Vox tweets, is this going to be a deadly pandemic? No. The tweet was deleted weeks later. (laughs) Canada's health minister, Patty Hajdu, uh, who would later say that there was no reason to doubt Chinese coronavirus status, says that the risk of the virus is, quote, low, and that early warning systems are working exactly as they should. The, quote, spread of the virus is contained, according to her. Right, her? Yeah. Yeah. Patty. Well, we can't assume. I was going to say, assume don't assume. Uh, Also, on that day, death counts indicated that 213 people had died and nearly 10,000 had been infected. That was January. That was just January. Yeah. I don't remember hearing about it at all in January. Uh, yeah, I do somewhat. I'm more in tune to that stuff, politically wise, at oh, least. Yeah. <laughs> February 2nd, there's a virus that has infected 15 million Americans across the country and killed more than 8,200 people this season alone, according to CNN tweets. It's not a new pandemic, it's influenza. So essentially, there are a lot of deaths, but it's not a new virus, it's, it's influenza. Not, yeah. So don't be worried about it. Don't nope. overreact. Meanwhile, on that day, the New York Health City Commissioner tweets, As we gear up to celebrate the hashtag Lunar New Year in New York City, I want to assure New Yorkers that there is no reason for anyone to change their holiday plans, avoid the subway, or certain parts of the city because of hashtag coronavirus. February 4th, in his State of the Union address, Trump remarks, we are coordinating with the Chinese government and working closely together on the coronavirus outbreak in China. My administration will take all necessary steps to safeguard our citizens from this threat. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, on the other hand, rips up his speech as soon as it was over. That was fun. February 5th, over 5,000 passengers on two cruise ships in Asia are ordered into quarantine as a worldwide death toll from the coronavirus reaches 490. The Senate also acquits Trump on the two counts of impeachment that day. We all know where the focus was at that point in time. Mm -hmm. News-wise, it was on the impeachment because that was more important than what was going on, which is why they can say retroactively now that Trump wasn't acting fast enough because they didn't cover it, so there's not much record to go back on and actually take a look at. Well, nobody's holding them to what they said beforehand. Yep. Mark Levin, not that one, from the radio show, the chair of the New York City Council Health Committee and a Democrat tweets on February 9th, in powerful show of defiance of coronavirus scare, huge crowds gathering in New York City's Chinatown for celebration ahead of, of the annual uh, Lunar New Year Parade. Chance of be strong Wuhan. If you are staying away, you are missing out. You're missing out on the deadly virus. <laughs> February 11th, Klain, the Biden advisor, remarks that the evidence suggests the coronavirus won't be a serious pandemic. Let's keep on going here. There's, you got to look at this timeline. Again, I'm going to link to this as well. Uh, February 14th, France announces Europe's first coronavirus death. 
February 17th, <clears throat> we're now over a month into this, Fauci announces that the risk of the coronavirus infection in the U.S. is minuscule, going back to the article that we talked about before, February 18th. Uh, in the remarks at the Joint Base Andrews, uh, Trump states, I think President Z is working very hard. As you know, I spoke with him recently. He's working really hard. It's a tough problem. I think he's doing, going to do, look, I've seen them build hospitals in a short period of time. Okay. <clears throat> February 19th, Iran reports two coronavirus deaths. The 23rd, coronavirus infection surge in Italy and South Korea. And Italy begins their lockdown. February 24th, it's exciting to be here, especially at this time, to be able to be unified. You know what? Uh, you're probably not going to believe what Nancy Pelosi said, so let's just take a look at what she said right now. It's exciting to be here, especially at this time, uh, to be able to be unified with our community. Uh, we want to be vigilant about what it might be on the, uh, what is out there in other places. We want to be careful about how we deal with it. But we do want to say to people, come to Chinatown. Here we are. We're, again, careful, safe, and come join us. Reminds me of Justin Timberlake on uh, SNL. We're going to hold down to Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, she's literally out there like, I mean, again, this is almost like the hydroxychloroquine. Trump's reacting to it. So they want to take the opposite yeah. approach. Come on out. You shouldn't be jumping the pool. It's nice. It's full of COVID. It's fine. <laughs> Thing after thing after thing. We go all through March and everything else. There's a whole timeline on the things that are going on but here. But once the Trump started doing something about it, then they switched and said he didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. yep. So it it's, doesn't matter what he does. It's not the right thing. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay. So that's a response timeline. Uh, the media labels Trump a racist for saying the Chinese virus, the China virus, the coronavirus, the Wuhan virus. Except they weren't really on board with that in the beginning because they happened to be saying it before Trump was the saying it. So yeah. any way to label Trump or his supporters or anything as racist is taken advantage of. But don't believe me. Let's take a look at what the media actually said during this time. This is all happening at a time that we're starting to see a message shift here because you're starting to hear the Republicans, especially Trump Co., calling it the Wuhan or the Chinese coronavirus. They're looking for someone to blame. Concern is growing this morning over an outbreak of a new SARS-like virus in China. At least six people have died from the Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The 34-year-old ophthalmologist diagnosed Saturday with the Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan virus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. What more can you tell us about the similarities or differences between SARS and the Wuhan coronavirus? The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus in China. The Wuhan uh, coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. From the Wuhan. Uh, coronavirus. Wuhan coronavirus. Fears continue to grow over the outbreak of the Wuhan coronavirus. Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. We have new information about how the Wuhan coronavirus is spread. Tying coronavirus to China and Chinese people isn't just a racist dog whistle. It's a whole racist orchestra. It's a mighty, mighty racist boss tone. I hear Stephen Miller in this foreign virus setting up Travel bans for the outside invasion of the disease? That's not the, the way The Chinese coronavirus yeah, that they've been that's calling. Not the first U.S. case of Chinese coronavirus. The Chinese coronavirus. Uh, this is coming as the Chinese coronavirus. China's coronavirus outbreak. China's coronavirus. Outbreak anxiety. The death toll nearly doubles in China's coronavirus outbreak. China's coronavirus. Just how bad is China's coronavirus crisis? China's coronavirus outbreak. China's coronavirus outbreak. China's coronavirus outbreak. China's coronavirus. China's coronavirus. China's coronavirus. China's coronavirus. Concerns about the China uh, coronavirus. Uh, it's going to come across to a lot of Americans as smacking of a xenophobia, uh, right. to use that kind of term. Before now, it's never been unusual to name a virus from where it originated. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think Trump ever said, don't interact with Chinese people, you'll get the China virus. It, he's always been referring to where it originated. 
It it's needs a name. The West Nile virus? West Nile, the Spanish flu. Like, <laughs> it, it needs a name. They're all racist. Every, if you don't know now, everything is racist. Well, it's one of those we didn't know better back then. Yeah, now we yeah, know better. Oh, now we're, now we're but be- they, they we didn't are know better, better people March. than the people before. They didn't know better in March, and then now <laughs> in May they know better and they're not calling it anymore. No, it's because Trump started using right. the terms. I'm um, yeah, okay. Uh, the media and the left will also take any side as long as it opposes Trump and his ideas or even his thoughts. So this is something that was actually published by the BBC outside of America because they hate him just as much as our media does as well. Uh, coronavirus. Trump's disinfectant and sunlight claims fact-checked. <laughs> Claim one. Uh, I, s- <laughs> I wish I could, I could read it like that. I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in one minute and there is a way we can do something like that by injection inside or almost a cleaning because you see it gets in the lungs and it does a tremendous number on the lungs. It does a great number on the lungs, you know. So they that's the, the claim they have to debunk is that is there a way to inject disinfectant into the body. The thing is with Trump, what people don't understand, and it took me a while to understand, we didn't like Trump. No. Personally, even we still have problems I, with him. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, once you get used to his way of speaking, it's like we sit, we listen to people, we think about how we want to respond, we formulate that opinion, and then we speak. Trump just happens to be just, one of those guys that just <laughs> rolls with what's going through his head. So I don't blame, he is a guy. That is, I mean, you can't get more transparent than Trump. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. It's just it, that's the the fact. He's he's there. He's thinking, and you're hearing what he's thinking. It's and like the think, spe- he might as well have the speech bubble over his head. And with this, I think people have told him there is a way mm-hmm. to do this. Mm-hmm. And then, well, this first, is, this is a disinfectant. We're going to get to the other one. I think you're thinking about. Well, no, but there is something. Be, I don't know. I read afterward. It, it's obviously you're not drinking bleach. Right. <laughs> yeah. But there, there's some way to disinfect the blood. I, for, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, okay. I kind of rubbed it off. But the point is, I, I think people were telling him, like, oh, there are these options. And his way of articulating it, because he is not a medical doctor, is to say it in these terms that make sense to him. And yet people just think they, they're taking him way too literally. Yeah. Because I, he never said to drink wheat or drink Lysol or, and I, you know, anybody who needs to be told not to, maybe, <laughs> I'm not going there. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fact of the matter is he's thinking about what's going on and he just says it. He's like almost wondering out loud. Like I said, it's like the speech bubble over his head. I wonder if there's like a way, it's, it's yeah. like if, if someone intelligent, like, who was not intelligent, because I, I do believe Articulate? That, uh, articulate, yeah. yeah. If someone were on camera and just said it simply like this, you know, when you think about it, there's there's ways that we disinfect our countertops and everything with this virus. We're, we're going through this cleaning process. We want to make sure all the surfaces are clean. We're washing our hands and everything. And obviously, it's affecting major organs in the body. You know, you know, just thinking off the top of my head, is there a way that we could somehow disinfect those major organs, uh, you know, internally? That's something that our scientists should be really looking at right now. The way he said it was a little bit more elementary. Say, if you were a Democrat, you know? that would have been hailed such a yeah. good idea. <laughs> yeah, Fauci says it. It's like all hail, all fa- almighty yeah. Fauci. You know what I mean? The other one that he, uh, the other claim was, uh, I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, because obviously the UV, there UV seems to be a cor- correlation. Viruses. Yeah, the vitamin yeah. D portion and everything. Well, no, it's the UV rays. Right. Well, there's they're trying to figure out. Yeah. Vitamin, well, vitamin D deficiency uh, seems to be an overarching factor in the de- overall deaths and everything, and that is affected, the levels that you're in your body are affected by sunlight. Right. So your body makes vitamin D from the UV light. Yes. But UV light also, also kills, kills yeah. viruses. Yeah. So I th- the, what he's talking about here is not yes. building vitamin D. It's the killing of the right. virus with the UV light. Exactly. Okay. So in regards to that, he said, I, su- I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, which you can do either through the skin or in some other way. I think you said you're going to test that too. So we'll see. But the whole concept of the light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's pretty powerful. So people are like, 
flashlight? Light? You know, like, like, yeah. you know, they're like, what an idiot, you know? Who the heck would come up with this stupid idea of putting light into your body? Well, this is according to We Are Change. Twitter suspends an account of a biotech company testing UV light to treat coronavirus. This there is, they is a came treatment out. where they take your blood out and run it through a UV light. I believe that this one, um, it says here, so this person tweeted, update, uh, Twitter just suspended the account of publicly traded biotech company AYTU Bioscience that created a novel COVID-19 treatment approach utilizing UV light in the lungs that at real Donald Trump was talking about. So you know what happened here. He was probably briefed on this type of technology mm -hmm. that something was going on and was probably ha maybe half paying attention. There's probably a lot of stuff he's being briefed on. Hey, we're this companies testing putting UV light through the lungs and everything mm -hmm. how does that look I had rods going down into my lungs to pull out the fluid that was building up and everything it would be as simple as um, intubating light. someone with uh, fiber optic type things and mm -hmm. blasting UV light out there and possibly mm -hmm. killing the virus in your lungs which is what this company was working on but using UV light to kill viruses isn't anything new no it's not yeah yeah but they're talking about they're acting the like he's a com is, well yeah. there are treatments with it but they're acting like he's a complete moron because yeah. he can't articulate it in a way that is convincing yeah. if that makes sense yeah absolutely. like again he's not a medical doctor he's probably never heard of these treatments before so how is he supposed to come across and fully explain it to also other people who are not doctors and don't fully understand mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. um also, it turns out that when he touted hydroxychloroquine, like we were talking about earlier, he may have been on the right track there as well. This is according to the Henry Ford Health System. Treatment with hydroxychloroquine cut death, cut death rates significantly in COVID-19 patients, according to the Henry Ford Health System studies show. This was done in Detroit. And it says, in a large-scale retrospective analysis of 2,541 patients hospitalized between March 10th and May 2nd, 2020, across the system's six hospitals, the study found 13% of those treated with hydroxychloroquine alone died, compared to 26.4% not treated with hydroxychloroquine. None of the patients had documented serious heart abnormalities. However, patients were monitored for a heart condition routinely pointed to as a reason to avoid the drug as a treatment for COVID-19. Now, does it always work? Obviously, that's that's not the well, case. Well, it's a pharmaceutical, so it doesn't Thir always work. Right, and, and that, but to be fair here, 13% died as opposed to 26% that weren't treated with hydroxychloroquine. There's a percentage difference there. And what is the left always saying about the treatments? If it saves just one life, it's worth, it's worth it going for it. Mm -hmm. Here, it's working for some people. It's the same concept I always talk about with education and why Common Core is so bad, because it's the only way you're allowed to do things. Mm -hmm. When we know damn well that some kids learn better by watching, some learning by doing, some by listening, some by participating, some by getting their hands dirty and everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's multiple ways that kids learn. And we also know that when it comes to cigarettes, okay, I always use this example for health things, not everyone who smokes cigarettes gets cancer. Right. Everybody's body reacts differently to things that are put into it, mm -hmm. which is exactly why we have a problem with vaccines, which we'll get to in right. a little bit. Because vac we know people that have almost died from vaccines. We know those that have had serious side effects from vaccines. We've seen stories of people that gave vaccines to their kids that became immobilized. Right. And it's because things injected into every anyone's body reacts differently according to that body type and everything. So will hydroxychloroquine work for everybody? No. But if it works for some, it's worth shooting so for. It's if that, worth if that offering is as an option that yeah. they can choose. Yeah. Yep. That's all you would think if this virus was so terrible that they would be embracing any attempt to reduce the death rate but they're yep. not it has to be a vaccine and nothing else yep and then that, that should make you wonder no kidding <laughs>
Um, before I get into the last topic here, I actually forgot to uh, mention a another personal experience, not of myself, but of one of my friends <clears throat> that I meant to show out in the crazy mandate section of the things that we we're going over. I somehow missed this, and I just realized it. But one of my friends was in uh, Bethlehem and mm-hmm. went to a restaurant uh, to eat outside. Okay, so this just gets crazier and crazier. And this is the experience she had, and thankfully she got this on video. No worries at all. I just want to make sure it's if you get like an appetizer or a soup, it's okay, but not dessert. Oh, like if you get a dessert at the table. We were just told we couldn't order because we so weren't we eating, a- but we were eating. Oh, but it was the I'm just curious. Food? I'm just, I'm just curious. It, has to be, it can't just be like a dessert. Okay. Because you, you want a drink, correct? So if you get an appetizer, though, it's okay. Yeah. If you get some appetizers, that's totally fine. Okay. So okay. shrimp cocktail, cool chocolate cake, no. I'm, I'm so sorry. No, no, we're not. Yeah. We're not trying to start trouble. It just, I'm just it's curious. Strange. So is that a Hotel Bethlehem rule or like a? We just try to follow the CDC guidelines okay. as much as possible. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. So a couple things I want to point out here. Number one. I'm not trying to put Hotel Beth on, on blast or have people protest it or anything no. because I do believe in most cases, like we talked about earlier, that employees are just trying to do what they're told to do and, so and they don't get in trouble either. Restaurants are just trying to stay open oh, any yeah. way they can. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. Number two. Thank you, Scott. That was funny about so cocktail shrimp yes chocolate cake no so, so the virus is very intelligent yes, that's what we've it's, learned you so have no idea i mean chinese you, people are very smart it's true that's that's a so if you're uh, gonna sit in a restaurant and just drink a beverage you're very much at risk for covid but if you are going to have a meal you're not going to get it in the same seat same distance from everybody else but it depends on what you eat. Mm-hmm. But if you go to Walmart, you won't catch it. Only at restaurants, only at mom and pop stores. <laughs> Excuse me. It comes back to uh, the Christians getting creative and everything. I think we need to start being creative as patrons of businesses. So I would have said, um, okay, I would like chocolate cake as an appetizer. <laughs> You know. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> no, but I think, so originally it was Pennsylvania and New York yeah. have these restrictions and they originally said you have to order food. Well, bars got creative and they're like, here's a peanut butter and jelly yeah. sandwich. Yeah. Or because, peanuts. Or peanuts. Yeah. Or I, I heard tater tots. Yes, tater. Yeah, that was a So big one. it's like, here's something super cheap because I know you don't really want it. Yep. But yep. now you can have your drinks. And then... They modified. Of course, the governors have to be like, well, no, 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 that's not okay. Yeah. It has to be a full meal. Yeah. And it's, we, I heard somewhere a sandwich doesn't count as a meal. <laughs> so now you're getting way too specific. Like, if this doesn't scream, it's not about your health. Like, I don't. That's what I don't understand why people aren't getting. So all the stuff that we've gone over, mm-hmm. the conspiracy theorist in me which I don't like conspiracy theories. I'm not an Alex Jones guy or anything. I look at the data. I look at the numbers that we looked at tonight. I look at the crazy mandates. I look at what the governors were doing. And it, it, it again, it screams as to why we are so skeptical of the government and why politically we are the way that we are with everything, with wanting a smaller government because they shouldn't have this kind of control. And the, the part of me that looks at what's going on here, you know, my friend there, Rachel, posted this video and she's getting a lot of traction with it. There's a lot of comments and people are going, what do they mean? That doesn't even make sense. Well, of course it don't know. Well, of course it doesn't make sense though, because it's supposed to be obnoxious and just ridiculous. It's supposed to be that way. And the reason is because in my mind, I believe they want to see how much they can control you. Mm-hmm. Where is the breaking point? How far can we push these people to comply with our asinine rules before they say, no, enough is enough. And then they measure that distance. They mm-hmm. measure to see how much they can control us. Now, the, the, here's the biggest thing. Here's what I really fear, and it feeds back into making your kids little assholes too, is the fact that we are, we are using people. The people that are complying the most are also being used as useful idiots to control the rest of the population mm-hmm. through shaming and, uh, and uh, what is it, shaming and 
I don't know the word control. It's just, it's just, yeah. It all comes down to control because it's social control. Because they're the brown coats. Yeah, they're the brown coats that are turning in their neighbors. That are, yes, yeah. That is what that that is what the government. So when is you go on. to the manager of a store and say that person's not wearing a mask, that it's the same thing. You're turning in your neighbors. Yeah, yeah. But what does a government have to fear about an uprising of people if they can also rely on a certain percentage of that mm-hmm. population to back them up with these mandates? Again, the. <laughs> the genius of your mask protects me, my mask protects you. Well, now I want you to protect me. Yeah. How dare you? You're trying to kill me. (laughs) But then again, I'm going to go drink a Mountain Dew and eat Twizzlers, but you better wear your mask to protect me because I care about my health. Well, no, you don't. You know, the most effective thing you can do is change your own habits. Somebody else wearing a mask is not going to have that much influence as you changing your life habits. If you're truly afraid of this virus, but nobody wants to do that, that's too difficult. It's easier to shame you into protecting me than me actually eating, you know, vegetables. Which is hard to do, I'll admit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the way, I know I'm going to get crap for cursing and using the A word after the podcast, but I do believe that these people fit the bill. That's not the only one. Well, whatever. <laughs> it, they deserve it. Anyway, uh, so so the last part here, is summing all this up, what is the answer, right? Mm-hmm. Where is this? Where are we heading? Where is this all heading? Besides the fact that the government has already confirmed UFOs this year in the midst of all this and throw it under there. <laughs> <laughs> so doctors now, according to this article, are pondering if the, the government can force and mandate vaccines for the virus under threat of penalties. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's that is the next step. That is where we are heading right now is mandating a vaccine. So this whole my body, my choice thing, uh, those same fact. people are going to be saying, no, 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 uh, it's my body you're affecting. Not that that works with the abortion argument mm-hmm. because it's not really uh, that body either. But, you know, there's so many car deaths a year too. Well, that is actually the perfect comparison because if I get in a car, I am putting everybody else in the road, on the road, at risk with my driving and they're doing the same to me. So uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to mandate that all people because of the number of deaths per year from car accidents that we're going to mandate certain blackout periods for cars not to be traveling on the road to cut down the dust for that because you're putting my life at risk when you go out on the road. There's so many ways that we can apply yeah. this double standard across the board for all these types of things. But, and this is this is according to Newsweek, this was actually written on April, I'm sorry, May 26th. Again, the links will be in the... Um, uh, in the video description and everything. It says state and federal governments can't force people to receive a new coronavirus vaccine against their will, according to experts, but lawmakers may be able to create a mandate that imposes consequences for not being vaccinated. So what is this saying? No, 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 no. Hold on. We're going to come out there, okay? We're the, we're the people that are going to be bastardized in this, right? Mm-hmm. That, you no, know, no, you can't force me to put something into my body. Uh, Leslie, hold on a second. I'm Mr. Government. I'm not saying that you have to get a vaccine. I'm just saying that you cannot do business. You cannot travel. You cannot send your kids into school if you use public school. You cannot go out into public. You cannot do merchant trading or buying or selling unless you have the the vaccine. That's all. You don't have to do it. You just can't do anything for the rest of your life. So... And by the way, another thing that's being talked about, if you are noted as not getting the vaccine, some people are actually advocating for tax penalties too. So you don't have oh, to I get thought, the vaccine. I heard the yellow badges. Yellow. Of all <laughs> colors, they pick yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stars too, most well, likely. Well, no, they were circles. But still, like, <laughs> so you have to wear a yellow badge that you're not vaccinated, which is ridiculous. The vast majority of adults are not up to date on their vaccines. Mm-hmm. And it, what I find interesting well, is... How how long does the vaccine last? It's only a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So if you're not continually getting revaccinated, you're not up to date on your vaccines, but you expect every single toddler to be up to date, that's hypocritical. Um, what surprises me is how many people we know that are very much pro-vaccine, um, but they outright say, I will not get the coronavirus vaccine. Well, and a great point right there. That comes right down to exactly my point on the whole vaccine thing is, which is we are, as Christians, as conservatives, always blasted as anti-science, 
-hmm. Personally, again, and I've thrown this out there before, I believe that science more and more every day proves the existence of God when you look into everything and how intricate life is and everything mm -hmm. that you look into. I, <laughs> Dr. Jason Lyle, that's all I got to say. <laughs> look into what he has to say and how he points out everything. That being said, who's anti-science? If you're telling me that science says that it takes three years Okay, mm -hmm. for a vaccine to be properly researched, and that a year and a half of that is for proper development and testing, that you're going to rush a vaccine to be out within a year to, to do this. But it's safe. But it's safe, and I'm the anti-science person. Mm -hmm. So you can waive science when it's beneficial to you. You know what I mean? I, we don't have to follow that science because we need to rush it out. And you know what it's going to come down to? You need the vaccine because it protects me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's already what it is. Yeah. And if you die, well, you can't get me infected at that point, so good. Well, and, and then that's the point. Like, So if your vaccine works, why does it matter if I'm vaccinated or not? If I'm that's running around with, with chicken pox and you're vaccinated for chicken pox, why, why do you care? Because there's a slight chance that yours doesn't work. Well, of course not after five years. Well, yeah. <laughs> which they don't know about. Yeah, most, they, most adults don't realize they're not up to date. And, and the, the, we could have, we, we've thought about, I, I even have an interview lined up coming up soon with a politi or a potential politician that did run and everything, and that her passion is anti-vax uh, platform and everything. But we can have the conversation, not tonight, because this is, this is ending a very long video and everything, but I, I sped read better than I ever had before in my life. The conversation that, you know, people that get vaccines can't even read the ingredients until the package is open. And if the package is open, you can't open the package unless you're actually getting we the vaccine. We have that issue, personally. Yeah. yeah. And then mm -hmm. the fact that those that, you know, push a vaccine never do the research on it. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't care about your research. They just because know that the doctor, doctor says it. Yeah. And who it, the is, vast majority of doctors have, I think it was one day in medical school learning about vaccines from the pharmaceuticals who create the vaccines, pharmaceutical companies. Um, and they, the vast majority of doctors, do not open the package mm -hmm. insert and yep. read it yep. so that you're taking the word of somebody who's never opened a package insert and read what they are injecting into your body here's one thing i do want to talk about in regards to vaccines so because to have the knowledge of what's about to come you think you think if you don't know anything about vaccines well if it if it turns out to be bad if people start dying from the vaccine if there's major complications Obviously, the government can be held responsible for that, right? No. Why? Because under Reagan, um, I forget the Vaccine Liability Act, is that the name of it? You cannot sue the pharmaceutical companies for, um, for any side effects mm -hmm. or, or death. Um, there is a special U.S. court um, at the federal level that you can take your case to and they have paid out billions of dollars to those who are vaccine injured or have died from vaccine. So we have proven in United States courts that vaccines are dangerous and yet they're still pushed on us. Yep. Okay. Uh, so speaking of doctors and everything, this isn't, um, this is actually Alan Dershowitz. So this is something that he actually yes. said in an interview as well. Uh, let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread a disease. Even if you disagree, you have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Wait, can I stop you? Hey, did yeah. No right yeah, not thing. to be vaccinated, meaning if they decide you have to be vaccinated, we have to be vaccinated? Absolutely. And if you refuse to be vaccinated, the state has the power to literally take you to a doctor's office and plunge a needle into your arm. <laughs> well, that's pretty graphic. They have yeah. the authority to take you into the doctor's office and plunge a needle into your so arm. So we can no longer claim we are in a free society when we can't even decide what is and is not injected into our own bodies. Yep, yep. That's ridiculous. Yep. Um, the next point that I was going to make is a point that you already made, which is how many people we know that even are pro-vaccine 
that have said when this thing comes out, there's no chance in hell that I am doing it myself or putting my family through it. And I think that is a very clear warning sign, especially from our friends in the healthcare industry, that something's very wrong with mm-hmm. the, the rushing of this. And not only that, and I don't want to get into the details of this, but we know healthcare industry people that are supposed to be um, treated with uh, vaccines by different methods, I think, that find ways to cheat the system so that it doesn't actually enter their body. And that's mm-hmm. all I'm going to say about that. But when I see healthcare professionals not trusting it and being in the incubator environment of these viruses and stuff like that, and they're still unwilling to protect themselves using these supposed mm-hmm. vaccines and everything, it speaks volumes. It speaks mm-hmm. volumes to me, you know? And I think what Dershowitz said, too, is you, when it affects me, you have no right to say no. Well, you don't innately carry these viruses. No. You know, if you don't have coronavirus, you are not spreading coronavirus. So, and, and a lot of, I don't, I can't speak for coronavirus vaccine, obviously, because it's not out yet. Mm-hmm. But a lot of viruses, I mean, vaccines have live viruses. So you get injected with that live virus and you can spread it. So for you to say, I, I'm endangering you, well, I'm not because I'm not carrying that virus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so point being, you and I both agree, this is not happening. Vaccine is not happening no. in our family, despite any penalties and stuff like that. <clears throat> it's a serious discussion. We know that. That's going to mm-hmm. have to be had if there's restrictions put out there. Uh, that's a discussion we're going to have to have in the future, but it's certainly not being injected into our kids, no matter no. what. And I mean, you and I have spent a lot of time researching the diseases and and vaccines and, you know, it it wasn't just from Jenny McCarthy and actually none of my information came from Jenny McCarthy. Um, So this one would be no different. We would research this one as well. But when it first comes out, there's going to be no research to read because the testing has not been up to par which is well, not very they're, high. They're going to come out with it soon in Russia, so we could go off of what Russia well, says. Well, yeah, so if Putin says it's okay, then I will trust Putin. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're agents. Uh, point being, you could, I could tell you right where to put that vaccine if you come near us with it. That's it. Um, so all that being said, I think, you know, the people that debate us online mm-hmm. are not prepared to sit through a whole thing like what we just went through because it's a lot of information and what they don't realize is that we spend the time looking into this kind of information formulating an opinion based on mass amounts of data and this is just scratching the surface not from watching a newscast yeah well and we don't have cable TV. No, no, but I'm saying I, I think a lot of people watch a newscast and they think they're fully informed yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah. but the point being the other point being here that you know people question us on like why we aren't listening to the authoritative figures in the in the science fields and stuff like that or Dr. Fauci like they praise this guy and it's clear that he he admits to lying it's a fraud from the start. Yeah. I mean he he there was something with him in, during the AIDS pandemic too that uh, he did wrong. I mean the guy is proven over and over again that he lies and, and he spreads lied misinformation. Oath con- yeah. Congressional hearings and um, he has financial interests in the vaccine. Yeah. So how can you trust somebody who can benefit financially from everything blowing up? And if you, okay, so we're supposed to trust the authorities. Well, if I'm doing that, I'm flip-flopping constantly. I can't keep my head straight because we're Mm -hmm. going side to side. Um, So why would I listen to somebody who can't be consistent? And I understand, you know, changing your opinion when new information comes out, but new information does not come out and change that drastically that quickly. Oh, it's new data. New data. New data. So, point being, if if you've ever interacted with us in a short response on a Facebook post, it, it, no matter what, it's short comparatively to everything that we talked about here, the mass amount of information, and that being only the surface level, then you can understand now, at least somewhat based on what we were talking about, why we're so skeptical of everything that's going on. You know, we're not going to blindly listen to someone that's anti 
virus, anti-mask, pro-business uh, with no data to back that up. But we're also not going to blindly float down the river on the social stream and put on a mask and you know go along with this whole shutdown mentality while people are losing their livelihoods and everything when there's data that backs up the other way. You, you know, have to take the information to use common sense and discernment and go from there. Yep. Yeah. So, I'm back. <laughs> so, that is just pieces of everything that I'm looking at with the virus right now, right now and where we stand, where I stand. And, you know, in the future podcasts that come out and everything, I'll tie in the, the virus and how it's affecting things. But really, this is the base of operations for the virus and my stance on it. And I almost certainly expect that this video at some point is just not going to be able to make it around if it gains any traction yeah. based on everything that I'm saying here. So I want to thank you for sitting through this. If you did, I thank you, Leslie, for joining in with me. And um, yeah, now at least you know where we stand. I'm the Generation Y Conservative. Thank you for joining me. Have a great night and God bless America. <laughs>